The thoughts, views, and opinions expressed by this podcast as well as its hosts are for entertainment purposes only. I repeat, it is not serious. It is not real. No one is exposing, revealing, indicting, or telling you anything about themselves. Also, we do not encourage you to try this at home. We are trained professionals who do not have your best interests at heart or our own. <laughs> Enjoy the show. I woke up so thankful that we was coming into electricity today. <laughs> that sounds silly, right? That was some bullshit. I'm not going to lie. That made that day long as hell. Oh, shit, but day. now I was also glad that that, that happened, day. that that very humbling moment, because I remember them cutting the lights off and, you couldn't and I didn't have on. the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same. Actually, I wasn't paying the bill because I didn't have the money, and you just hope and hope they don't clip you, hope they uh -huh. don't clip you. Then when they finally clip you and you got a call, yeah, that'd be, one time that shit was like 10 grand. Yep, I've had that same shit yeah. happen. And I had my man. They, they, oh, they, uh oh. Look, <laughs> look uh -oh. they started getting so bad on one of my houses. Dog, them niggas was climbing the pole, cutting the wire. Oh, shit. Because <laughs> I had the electrician just come cut the shit back off. My man would climb up on the pole, reconnect that shit right back at the pole. That'd be 250. Here you go. <laughs> no mm. bullshit. Then we had some dudes that would try to lock up the meter on the PSENG people. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But they got the big Batman belt. <laughs> <laughs> when they come, they got the big Batman belt. They, they are prepared for whatever problem you got yeah, over there. No bullshit. Them PSENG. And when you broke the PSCNG people, they're going to play you on when they're coming to uh, fix your shit, when they're coming to turn it back on. It will be there like 1230 midnight after somewhere around there. Yo, just wait up. <laughs> wait man. outside. Yeah, wait up. And man. you wait better up. be there and you better be awake. No, and boy. they hit you with the extra fees. Ooh, it's yeah. like, yo, you know I don't have money. How are you putting more <laughs> nah, late fees on this shit? Niggas be rude. Like, yeah, yeah, somebody be out there between 8 and 12. Mm-hmm. You sitting there at 1230, you call them. Yeah, 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 my bad. They be out there between 12 and 4. 4.45, yeah. mm -hmm. you're like, yo, bruh, <laughs> I took off work today. I mean, what you want me to do, nigga? You ain't pay us in eight months. We ain't got no reason to be coming out there. It's I thought we fault. had them. I was like, nah, they just cut, cut it off today. Got to be in the area. Can you track them? No, we can't. <laughs> Quick, just, just, just be there. No. Damn, Mel, you can't relate, huh? No. Damn. I can't. I've, I've never had a delinquent bill. Like, I wouldn't either if I had a pussy. <laughs> If I had a pussy, I would never have a delinquent bill. <laughs> so. That's a good point. <laughs> Yo, that's a good what point. What is she talking about? That that's is, a good point. That is amazing. Um, Women yeah. got time to do shit like you agree be, or you be disagree? scared. Mm -hmm. oh, so you, you agree or you off. disagree? That's him doing it. <laughs> no, I was asking. I, I think that the two things are mutually exclusive concepts. Yeah. No, you don't. Yeah. No, However, you don't. However, <laughs> no, you do not think that. For real? Or you just pardon? It's just potting. All right. All right. <laughs> thank, thank you for your honesty, dog. Girls got time to be scared of insects. Right. <laughs> like, y'all know, y'all, the, the way y'all live life, like, oh my God, uh, bye. Like, men don't even have time to. At all. Got done. Though. I wish I could be scared of insects. Nothing. Oh, my skater. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> uh, broken arm. Nigga, get out and go to work. When women have to get out of their own bubble and apply their brain to like somebody else's life, like Father's Day is coming, like right? It's, oh my God, what do you get somebody who has everything? Like, have you not thought about me at all this whole time? <laughs> right. Have you only been walking around thinking about yourself? You should know what I'm lacking already. You should oh, know man. what's what's low. Let me not start with hate. I'm starting with love. We got a nice, <laughs> smooth, easy, fun. Fun cast going here, huh? huh? Uh, it's just the funsters. <laughs> funsters. <laughs> Ice is not here. Flip is not here. It's just the funsters. <laughs> Look. Think peace is coming. Oh, you Think better believe it. You, we're unpacking something today, buddy. <laughs> we will get to the bottom of it. Um, all right, where's my little horse clip that I like? I'm sorry? Pause. <laughs> that sounds wild. Well. That's a nice case. Phone case. Ooh, it's nice. You got the solid gold. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fancy. <laughs> you are fancy. I'm fancy. Mm -hmm. Saw some that little Instagram ad got me. Mm. Shit cost a little bit. I wanted to see what it was like. You just bought it because it cost a little bit. She Not was, true. How much it cost? I can't tell you. <laughs> oh boy, shit was four ninety nine. Our relationship. Let's make some things clear. Oh, never mind, bro. <laughs> no, for real. Never our, mind. In our bro, relationship. Okay. It's over for that. All right. It's over for you that. Can't tell me how much you weaponize case things. You weaponize things. You corny. And you paint me out to look away in front of my fan base and audience. 
But that's the that's the, that's the risk. That's the what? risk that you run when you invite your friends of 15 years to come to you and work with Bob you. You are Bob Ross with the paintbrush. You kidding me, nigga? I paint you out a certain way. Fam, you got buckets of paint. I think I think I put you in positions to win. Okay, that's what I think. All right, Joker, you got it. You got it, yo. You you got Bob it. Bob Ross, <laughs> fuck out of here. Uh, here we go. Strongest horse on the planet. No, get that back. The horses, strongest horse on the planet. This nigga be all Average Belgian horse can pull anything between twelve thousand and fourteen thousand pounds. Now, did anybody major in math or accounting? If the average Belgian horse can pull between 12,000 and 14,000 pounds, how many pounds can two Belgian horses pull? No, 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 Joe Biden. Incorrect. Your math was correct, but you use logic. And the reason you use logic is because you weren't exposed to what Belgian horses can actually do. They should be able to pull two times their weight. But here's the beautiful thing about the strongest horses on the planet. When you yoke two strong horses together and they're both Belgian, both of them are willing to overexert themselves to tell the other one, I'm setting the pace. Yeah, he smoked That's that how they get to 35,000 pounds. Mm. Belgian horses. Uh, he smoked that one. He smoked that one. Come on. He smoked that one. Come on. Shout out to the horses out there. He smoked that one. Come on. Shout out to the horses. Shout out to the horses out there. Shout out to the ladies that wear their faja the whole time. Y'all don't cheat the system. What? The whole time they doing what? The whole time they're supposed to wear it. Post surgery, six to eight months, and work out and eat right. It ain't just surgery. <laughs> All right, man. Yes, ish. And the first clip. First clip, ladies. The tightest clip. Don't try to cheat the system. Not the third one. Not that little loosey goosey shit. You know the one you're supposed to put it on. Hey, yo, you're such a bird, yo. <laughs> truly, truly. You are such a bird. I'm sitting here wondering how he has such in-depth knowledge. How do you, even know? how do you have such in-depth knowledge Listen, of the process? He sounds like he could run a recovery home. You know Facts. bullshit. Gotta get you one of them That mansions. could be your side gig. You could be a uh, nurse. Get one of them mansions in Columbia. I think that if you are a man who are... If you're a man in New York, you had no choice but to kind of learn a little something about it. I was late to the game. I was late learning about it. You had to kind of figure out what the hell was going on out here. I hey, to... bitch, why your lips look like that? <laughs> why the fuck? Why the fuck you got the duck lips? No, why, no one side, why, why one side taller than the other? <clears throat> they only gave you 12 cc's on the other side. Yeah, <laughs> like, you better learn what yo, they're doing crazy, out here. Yo. Uh, what episode is this? 636. Welcome to the Fun Cat! <laughs> Welcome to epi- hey, hey, Big Mel. <laughs> Welcome to episode 636 of the Joe Budden Podcast. I'm your humble, gracious, grateful, and highly favored or lowly favored host, Joe Budden, here with a few of my nearest and dearest. The beautiful, the amazing Melissa Ford is here. Number one. Thank you. Actually, hold up for a minute. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Ish is here. Let's see. Beep, beep. Who got the keys to the Jeep room? What? <laughs> Here we go. Yo, you did the whole vroom. Here we go. Let me get it right for my girl, Mel. Uh-oh. Uh, there we go. Let me get it right for my girl, Melissa Ford. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you may have seen her <laughs> in videos for the last 20 years now. Huh? Mel. I love that song. What? It that- is, I think I was playing it like two days ago. In the Jeep. Is in that, the, is that Jeep. what inspired you? Mm. What we're talking about, audience out there, Melissa Ford. At Melissa Ford. At Melissa Ford. <laughs> With a Y. <laughs> climbed on top of her car at the beach. Where did you at? It was at the beach. At the beach. At the she beach. parked on the beach. <laughs> climbed on top of her car in a bikini and started rolling around. <laughs> <laughs> that was new? Uh... Mm, not the newish is repurposed content mm. but for a purpose oh. yeah mm. what was the purpose so <laughs> I'm glad you said it okay so jeeps are like a huge community and there's this thing called jeep wave so everybody that has like a wrangler when you pass each other by in traffic 
throw up the deuces, wave. Oh, there's not a specific wave? It's, it's, it's just, not like a it, gang it's, sign? It's, it's an acknowledgement. It's basically an acknowledgement. And so there's some people who, a lot of people who drive Jeeps, they know this. And some people didn't know it. So I had friends who have Jeeps. I'm just like, do you Jeep wave? And they were like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I'm like, they're like, I was wondering why people were waving at me. And I'm like, it's an actual thing. So Wrangler drivers, they Jeep wave. So I was just kind of like, you know, just kind of connecting to my community. Not the Cherokees, though. No, 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 no. It's right. just, it's just Wranglers. Liberties, no. Nope, 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 just Wranglers. So you, so you sat on the Jeep and waved your body? Well, no, I mean. She rolled over on the top of the Jeep. Yeah, she did some things with her hair yeah. like this. You did the snake her on the Her tongue hood. was out. Her mouth was I waved open. at the end. Oh, got you. Uh, I did. I, I double waved uh, at the end. Okay. Yeah, no, she really went mm. crazy. Gotcha. Oh. Yeah. Extra small. Yeah. yeah. It's fine. Yeah. But I listen, that's not the point. I watched it and said, Guess what I said? So earthy. So, so, <laughs> so earthy. earthy. This don't seem, and I could be wrong, but this don't seem so earthy. Which can part? you speak to? Can you speak to that portion? Which I part? got the Jeep wave part, mm -hmm. but just the fact that I own a Jeep. Do you think that behavior is earthy? Don't try to word me out of my point. Um, you know. <laughs> Honestly, I've seen some some earthy girls, uh, maybe not on a Jeep, but they're like, you know, dressed in swimwear and they're by water, you know. I just happened to be in the parking lot. The water was over there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Did you think it was earthy? No. If you would have had some mountains or some... <laughs> some, some, some elm trees or something behind you, you oh might have got it God. off. You sitting in the middle of the it's, Wawa. That shit, <laughs> that shit, no it's, earth it's, anywhere. Anywhere at all. <laughs> no, yo, you sitting in the middle of the Walmart parking lot. That ain't earthy. I, that's all. I'm it's fine. We love I'm, you. I'm with you, though. You, we love yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love you. It's good content. Thank yeah, you. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, real, so I, really I, okay, so I have to be honest. It was shot while I still lived in LA. No. No, for real. So the palm trees are in the background. They're not, though. They are. No, no one noticed. No one noticed. See? No one noticed. See? You just told on yourself. Anyways. <laughs> Too much earthiness. <laughs> Too much earthiness going on All the earth. in the vid. Yo, uh, Ish is here. Parks is here. Poe is here. Corey is here. Erickson is here. And, and, <laughs> Savon stopped by to say hi, Don's man. Building. The building. The fucking Don. Savon the Don stopped by to say hello to us. He looks great. He lost some weight. He getting a lot of money. Smiles. Came in, look happy to not be here no more with us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking shit, man. Glad Savon is here with us. Savon works with us just on group, on group chat. Mm. Yeah. We haven't seen him. We put the pressure on him in the group chat. Though. Facts. Yeah, we had to. I didn't think it would work. I didn't think so either. I didn't, I didn't think, think so it would either. work. I thought he outgrew us. Yeah, I thought he was off it. Like, ah, oh, y'all crazy <laughs> in the chat. Uh, but good to see, good to see Savon and, and have him here. Uh, how's everybody doing? How y'all feeling? Feeling great. It's Fantastic. the weekend. Amazing. <clears throat> great. How, how was your week? Weather's breaking. Ooh. I slept. Yeah. It was a long Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. We were here late. Very much so. Yeah, we were. Yeah. That shit takes it out of you. Pause. 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 <laughs> yeah, okay, pause, yeah. So that was it. All right, you no, guys, week was so of it. The fun cast! <laughs> uh, energy up in here! I ended up going to Brooklyn Chop House for kind of like the first time to eat. Which one? The one in the city. Times uh, Square? Times, yeah, Times Square. All right. Yeah. I went to dinner with um, MC Light and a couple of her friends. Mm. Yeah. Shout out to Light. I mean, she's just, she's, I just love her. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my excitement. And then just ran errands and rested because... Tuesday was... It was a lot. was a monster. It was a lot. Yeah. Is there anything that you can tell us that MC Light said that you shouldn't say on air? <laughs> um, <clears throat> no. All right. No. What would you guys talk about? We talked about a bunch of things, but the Sukiyana situation came up in conversation, mm. which, you know, I feel like we'll talk about later on in the show because, you know, everybody's kind of opining and pontificating about it, so... Oh, I can't wait to toss that ball right to you and Ish. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to toss oh, that one to y'all. Me and Parks will cover the music today. Indeed. And I think it is on all of the other shit. It is an extremely important conversation for all of us to participate in. I, I'm ready to support you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally ready to support you. Let's do it. That's what God, I'm here to do. Fool, um I was at Tatiana all week. 
<gasps> were you? All week long. Yeah, I can't rely on your connects, girl. <laughs> well, I mean, you were Please. supposed to have established Did there. she think? What, what did she think? <laughs> like, I was who I was before you got I mean, here. I, I mean, know, shit. I know. Just, I just, well, yeah, I'm I want to talk jelly. to you. Oh, my. As you should be. Yeah. As you should be. From when we went mm. <laughs> to now. Oh, the outdoor patio. Mm. Girl, mm. the outdoor patio. But not just that. The 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 New York Times rating. Mm -hmm. Got them lit. You can feel it. They was, they was well on their way to being lit. Mm. Mm. But they there now. Yeah. Mm. It's that. My, I think my first night. Uh, bumped in uh, ASAP Ferg on his way out. It's always fun when you see a rapper like on the low in a cut somewhere where you're not supposed to. Ah, yeah, nigga, what's up? I see you. I see you now. <laughs> it may just be Ferg now. I saw him on the. Uh, yeah, you're right about over that. there. I think it's just Ferg now. You're right about that. Mm -hmm. And I never call him ASAP Ferg when I see him. I call him Ferg. Right. <laughs> I saw him. Went up in there. They changed a few things on the menu. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. They got a little hot pocket on that menu, mm -hmm. boy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my Lord. I tried to order one to go. It was pocket. like, nah. I don't think they call it that on the menu, do they? Yes. Yeah. Oh, Is it called the hot pocket? It's a fancier name, but it ends in hot pocket. I feel like it was it's a, a hot pocket. I feel, well, like, hot I feel like it's like a curried goat empanada. Okay, you That's clearly right. haven't been there in quite some time. I was there like three weeks ago. That maybe I was wasn't there the on day, the menu three the weeks ago. The day they opened they the They have a curry goat empanada, mm -hmm. and they also now have a brand new item that you've never had, mm. which is a Hot Pocket inspired by the chef and things he liked in his childhood. Got so it's it. Like a, 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 <clears throat> it's like a... It's pepperoni, but it's like squash, just like all together with some other spices. They bring this white spicy cream. It's, you have to try it okay. instead of stepping on my story. I'm sorry. <laughs> Fun <laughs> cast! Get, get your VIP up. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, that Hot Pocket was great. I couldn't take one home, so we went right back the next day. Uh, Chef Ramsey was in, in oh, the shit. kitchen Thursday. Wow. The, the Clintons had just left. Damn. So Thursday, I went there a little late uh, that day. I went earlier the next night. Mm. Outdoor patio time, beautiful in the city, Lincoln Center vibe. They playing, what's that game I like uh, when you throw the, the beanbag bag. in the hole? Yeah, the beanbag game. That's over there. Uh, Michael Ely in there. Shout out to Michael Ely. Sal saluted him on some light skin love. <laughs> I mean, uh, Jeffrey. Jeffrey from uh, Bel Air. Bel Air. Oh my God. The new one or the. Spoke to him. He said, You look familiar. I didn't even bother. It's okay. I start seeing him feeling like I've seen you somewhere. Don't worry about it, man. I like, <laughs> I like your show, buddy. <laughs> uh, these new niggas. Niggas got famous a few years ago. They'll play you. Like, who are you again? <laughs> hey, I'm a fan. <laughs> Jeffrey, I'm a fan. Jeffrey. And the funniest, Ryan Coogler. Hmm. Saw so Ryan Coogler. Mm, wow. Keep going. But he came up to my table. Heard what you said, nigga. He came up to my table. <laughs> he like all and that. He, and he was smiling. He, he like said, all yo, that I, ha I had to come. He said, I had to come say what up to you, my brother. <laughs> Heard what you said. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I'm about to get beat up. I'm about to get beat up in Tatiana by Ryan Google. I love my life, yo. I love my life. No, nah, but he said he loved it. He, he said he loved the commentary. He heard every word. He said his, his people hit him. They was laughing. He just said congrats on everything. And I was like, whew. <laughs> <clears throat> it's a little tough out here when you review people's you know I mean? people shit. I mean... But how tough can it be when you make a couple billion your opening week? Facts. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You don't really care what nobody had to say. Yeah, say hey, fucking like Mexican Panther. Ha ha. <laughs> 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 ha ha. It Four worked. Three's on the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just made them go to the movie theater more. Uh, yeah, but they uh they got a ribeye on the menu now. Let me get off of get off of this. But it was yeah. Oh, listen, listen, it's different now. Fuck what Mel was talking about. It's different now. I'm thinking about throwing my birthday party. I mean, not party. Uh, dinner. I'm going next I'm week. in there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about doing a birthday dinner I, there. I got a uh, reservation for next week. They they open up the reservations every day. It's booked every day. That shit like You gotta know somebody to sit down in there. That shit like they got the bots buying the Nikes and the fucking Yeezys mm -hmm. to get a fucking dinner. 
I post a little that picture. Uh, people start hitting me, talking about how you there. I, they told me told me to wait weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, I ain't you. <laughs> That's apple. The fuck is you yeah. talking about? Get off my phone. Uh, but yeah, shout out to uh, Kwame. Shout out to everybody up there. Tatiana, what a vibe. Yeah, mm -hmm. What a vibe. Father's Day uh, Father's Day. Father's Day, Sunday, huh? I should call my son and see what my plans are. He ain't say nothing to me. So you ain't got no plan, nigga. Maybe it's a surprise. That ain't true. You crazy? My son don't, my son don't play by me. It's going to be something. It may not be Sunday. <laughs> he <laughs> might call on Tuesday. He's like, I got paid on Sunday. I had to wait for the check to clear, mm -hmm. so... Uh, Sin uh, Singo hit me talking about, hey, if you ain't got no plans, you can bring Lex a little early. I was like, huh? That's <laughs> <laughs> my father's day. God damn, y'all don't play. <laughs> Yeah, it's Sunday, nigga. Oh, yeah, I want to take him to El Salvador to see my family. Mm. Oh, no, I ain't on my yeah. ass. I ain't want El Salvador. <laughs> come, on, come on, look at guys. Look at that. <laughs> look at guys. Look at guy dads. <laughs> well, you already know what I said, because I'm a real nigga. Hey, I got to sign off on that one, buddy. <laughs> you need my signature for that. You got a passport already? I think I signed off on that one. She, she, got, she got me. <laughs> she got me. Definitely got signed. She got me. You got to. Dads don't be one. Now, now, now you got to go there. It ain't even no signature more. You got to go. Oh, for real? You got to physically go. I did. I had to physically go there. They wanted to see you. Yeah. They wanted to see your face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, your situation. Mm -hmm. For real, period? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't get out of here. Yeah, you got to yeah. go. Yeah. They got to make sure that it's not a little... Yeah, because anybody could be know, coming... parental just, yeah. kidnapping situation. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it, got it. Well, mm -hmm. Father's Day is here. Shout out to all the fathers out there. Indeed. Shout out to all the dads. Uh, shout out to the moms, too, but it's not about y'all right now. Shout out to the dads. Get that nigga man. something more than the tie and some socks, too, yo. Yeah, the tank tops, the cologne. Oh, my God, what do you get someone who has everything? Uh, <laughs> use some thought for a change. Go yeah. buy, buy him a jet, nigga. Hmm? You don't got that. A jet? Yeah. Shit. My nigga the private jet. My girl got me like a spa day. That's nice. You can't go wrong with that. <clears throat> Have... What? I didn't say a word. What, what you, you looking at me on? I'm, I'm looking at you because we podcasters. <laughs> That's what I'm you be stealing at. my lines. You be stealing look, my look. lines. That's yeah, she got me a little spa day. I need a I need a, a facial pause, like a good one, where they do the steam, massage, pull all these toxins and shit out of you. Are Try you me. doing anything for your father for Father's Day? Uh, probably. Yeah. But I can't know until <laughs> I see what my kid is doing for me and what time. Mm. Mm. I want us all to just go to dinner or yeah. brunch or lunch or something mm. like that. Cook yeah. out something. Yeah. Last year we went. We all went to brunch in Harlem. Mm -hmm. Like so, that's that's our thing. Mm. That sounds nice. Yeah. That sounds yeah. Really nice. Shout out to Dad. Love you, man. Uh, all right. Where do you want to begin? Music. Let's do it. That would be it, you. We had a pretty good week this week. Tell us about it. It's been a quiet year of releases. We got we got Gunna. You want to start with Gunna? We can start with Gunna. Let's start with Gunna. You Listen, heard, man. Did you hear it? I heard it. One to ten? I don't know if I'm ready to give it a review, but it's very good, yo. It's very good. I'm shocked. Well, I'm not shocked. He's talented. That guy sound like he rapping and flowing like his life depend on it. I ain't going to hold you. It might a little bit. I would agree. He rapped like, um, I heard all y'all talking and you're not better than me. So I'm going to show you. Mm. Like all the people that had something to say about his situation, mm -hmm. it sounded like he wanted to be like, yeah, but you're not me though. That's what, that is what it sounds like. That's what it sounded like to me. And he said a lot of that also, lyrically. Yeah. <laughs> he was talking a lot of shit, yo. Production was great. Crazy. Fire. Yo. Fire. The whole shit is fire, yo. It really is. It is. And I'm not the biggest... Like, I'm Me not neither. The demo. I'm not the demo. Me either. But that, and I don't know if it's just because we've been talking about him so much and paying so much attention to his story to hear him like describe his story mm -hmm. in the music hit different, mm. but... I don't think that's what it is for me because contrary to that, I haven't heard him talk so much. No, I'm saying we've all been... The whole world has been but discussing world his has situation. Been discussing him. For however long now. For me, that's very separate than what you're able to produce musically. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. But I think... Like, it, that was a make... This was make or break for him. I'm just yeah, saying yeah, that like, because like of the story, like, you pay more attention to what he's interest. talking about. Yeah, that's true. 
Because like Park said, he's not his typical demo, but based on what he's been going through, I want to hear, like, what, you let me hear what you got to say. I'm a little and, more and I want to sure it. And I'm, I want to sure see that. if your production and all that shit is going to sound good because y'all were saying, y'all, it was kind of 50-50 if he was going to be able to pull the same producers and get the same quality sounds that he been had. What he proved is he, don't, he didn't need them. Or he may have got them. I don't or know. Or he might have got them from different they, motherfuckers. Still no, I'm talking, about, with, I'm talking so about, about the features. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm talking this, about the this, There's not a soul listed here. No, nah, no. Nah. And no I didn't features. hear not a one. Yeah, I didn't hear I didn't one. hear him. And I don't see him listed. That's what I meant. Like, now I was saying he's a, he's a singles artist. There's a lot of support. How do you show up for yourself without the futures and the Drakes and the thuggers? Whoever, whoever. Uh -huh. yeah. whoever, yeah. And what he proved is, no, it was me. It was yeah. me the whole. It was me the whole time. That's really difficult to do to show up this way and sound this good all by yourself with little to no support from your label. That was a big thing in what I was saying before too. Like, let's see when the label decides to show up. They didn't show up at all. He dropped bread and butter and had an album ready with with whoever helped do it. I didn't see the credits. Yeah, the, it's still not on title for whatever reason. Maybe because it was a little bit of a surprise drop. Sometimes titles a little bit slower to upload shit. But. Well, good point that you mentioned. It was Shadow Band for me, too. Yeah, I couldn't find it I could first. not find the album. I had to go find the name of the album and type that and whole type thing in for it to pop out. That, that's, that says something. Yeah. I didn't know that you could Shadow Band an album. Oh, yeah, it happens... Anything on the internet can be awesome. shadow banned. Yeah, it happens frequently with artists that are questionable for whatever reason. Mm. Tory shit. Chris Brown said shit. Chris Brown shit. When Chris Brown album yeah. came out, niggas couldn't find it. Yeah, it happens. The last album. It wow. happens. And it's Chris Brown. Right. So what I'm saying is I don't know what was spent on this project. It don't sound like the... It don't have that label sound that should be at that label mixing and mastering sound where everything just sound the crispiest. It sound like he did this, dropped his record, dropped his album two weeks later, and he's going to see returns. Yeah. He's going to see returns. Especially this if you have no big budget. This is really good music. It is. I'm impressed, man. I really am. I'm very impressed. Gotcha. And I think that's what he needed to do. Like, all the shit that's been around him, all the shit he's been accused of, and people saying this and that, you had to come out and deliver something that told your story and was fire. Yeah, I said he had to do something to make the label even even trust, continue to trust. And and the fans. So now fans are fickle. You can always get them. Fans a song will yeah. get a song will get them. But mm. you still gotta deliver a product product to the fans based off of what he's accused of to make them forget. Atlanta, I'm sorry, yo. I know some of y'all, y'all don't fuck with this nigga. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on out there. Because it's not my business. I don't live there. I don't have property there. I don't know if y'all, I don't know, but listen, man. This shit fire. <laughs> hey, hey uh, to the thugs and criminals, I'm sorry, yo. I'm going to play this. I'm going to play this thing. Same. I'm going to play it. I'm going to play this thing. And, and, because I was in the shower listening to this shit, and then I got in, got out the shower, I got in the car, and then Bread and Butter came on, and the flow of the album, oh, that shit sounds... Well, I knew what it sounded like, but in the flow of the album, mm. boy, does it sound a lot better. Gunner, I, if, hey... You got it. Yeah, respect. Respect do. You got it, yo. You did it. I saw a lot of fans re repeating the same sentiment. Like, I don't know about all that street shit, but this shit is fire. There you go. Begs the question. I wonder what, and, and, then, and then I don't like uh, Thug announcing his album coming. Yeah, I saw that. I don't know. You don't know what? Do you, you think, think it was he shady? did it? You think it was intentionally, like, to step on it? Yes. Okay. And maybe. There's I'm a civilian, no, so there, I don't, you know. There's no other reason that you do that if there's not some type of anger involved here. The label? Mm. The label what? Might be trying to play the game. That's the same label. It's, that's I know. Same. Which, which I'm, no, which is peaking the interest. Like, a word, let's create an animosity. We're going to put both of these shits out, so you're going to go buy his shit, and you're going to go buy his shit to see which one sound better, and now we're going to get two sets. Ish, I'm, I'm, I'm actually might be rolling with Ish on yeah, this like one. It may, be, two sales. it may be label games. I don't care about what y'all talking about. Academics posted uh, the comment of somebody asking Young Thug's sister if she was going to post uh, Gunner's album or cop the album, and her reply was publicly, it's on his page, was... No, make sure you do so I can eat. <laughs> mm. 
now what do y'all have to say since y'all were all in the that means nothing to y'all? No. Nah. I think the label still has an agenda, which is to make both of these motherfuckers sell. So now we're going to play. Remember 50 and Kanye? Not that 50 and Kanye is in that particular scenario. I, I get it. But, yo, we're going to create this oomph, uh -huh. and now both of us going to eat off of it. The label going to eat either way. The label is not stepping on Gunner's shit with one of their own joints. They're not going to do that. I, again, I'm saying that I don't think they stepping on it. I think they inciting the riot. Okay. So now we're going to both go buy both albums to see which one sound better. Uh -huh. Not even sound. And compare them. But not or even see sound what they're talking about. Exactly, What's funny is to, to me is y'all ain't even opened other. your brain to, to, to <laughs> even think about, well, what if this guy's upset? <laughs> well, I mean, wasn't... No, I th we thinking about that. Okay. Motherfuckers want to hear what they both got to say. You get what I'm saying? Like, we going, oh, word, what you said? Oh, oh. Damn, he said that in response. Oh, and we gonna play off it, and we gonna eat. That's that's my opinion. I didn't like it. I didn't, sure. I didn't like it. I didn't hear any shots. And granted, I only listened to it one time, so I don't have a deep dive on the lyrics. But I didn't hear any shots from Gunna towards Thug or any of that camp specifically. I have to listen more to, to before I start deep diving on shots and subliminals because he did a lot of talking. He did. And these internet kids already got breakdowns running around of what percentage <laughs> of bars was aimed at him, uh -huh. what percentage was about the case. Like, they already got that going on. Like I said, I only listened to this two times, once at five in the morning when I bought it, and again when I woke up when I got in the shower. So give me a little more time. Today, uh, I bought more albums today than I have all year. I think so, too. What else came out? Killer Mike. Mm. Oh, Killer my Lord, Mike came yo. out. That killer, that Michael. He went crazy. They that, went crazy. That, that Michael project. Hold up, man. Well, not y'all. Hold up. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I can't wait to. I can't wait to talk to him because I got questions. This this album sounds very different from other people's albums of late. In that, it sounds like they actually fucking tried. You mm. know what I'm saying? A lot of people kind of do bare minimum shit with music, and they did bare maximum, max maximum. With this production wise, feature wise, musicianship wise. Was this drop a surprise or No, nah, he's been yeah, he's been he's been, he's been rolling this out for a minute. Okay. He's had a couple singles. Oh my man, turn this nigga off. <laughs> turn this nigga the fuck off, yo. I told him yesterday, I spoke to him on Amp. Slaughterhouse used to be talking about features to have, and when Killer Mike came up, long talks needed to be had. <laughs> like, are y'all sure y'all want to invite this headache over here? <laughs> <laughs> like, y'all ready for all, all us? Killer Mike, yo. <clears throat> and no ID. That one, ah. Uh -huh. And you hear that? No, I'm going back. Fuck y'all. <laughs> Fuck what y'all talking about. What I'm saying, imagine being a rapper and this come on in the studio, yo. Killer Mike told me yesterday, and he's going to come here and speak to us. Mm. He told me that this is undeniably one of the best, greatest albums ever made. And I'll let him come expound on that. This is Shed Tears, Killer Mike, and Mozzie. Track Crazy. two. The features were fire. Phenomenal. Everything on this album is phenomenal. Interesting choices. Like, Mozzie is an interesting choice, kind of. Mm. We love Mozzie, but Killer Mike and Mozzie wouldn't think it would be a thing. Yo, dog. Crazy, yo. He insane. They were is absolutely wow. fucking bugging in this studio. Yeah. yeah. No, they put time into this. They put money into this. They put effort into this. Top to bottom. And you could hear it. And you can hear it. Go to my oh my Lord. God! Apple Music, you know what I mean? Yeah, nah, you cop that one ASAP. <laughs> they showed up. Mike got. Let me just read. Killer Mike, CeeLo, um, CeeLo Green, Mozzie, mm. Young Thug, Black, Aaron Allen, Jagged Edge, Andre 3K, Ty Dolla Sign on he, two. He got him on a couple yeah. Yeah, but he he spoke to that. He said I, he said a lot of things just fell. In my favor, this project. I sent Ty Dollar Sign one joint. He sends me back two. I end up using them both. <laughs> he said, I spent a lot of money, a lot of my own money. I had to talk to my wife about it, who's a businesswoman and accountant. And she's like, What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I'm building my art. And then I said, Jesus had to build. He started. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had an art yeah, boy. Yeah, no, you know what I mean? I no, he deserves this, though. He deserves to do that because his, his albums have never sounded like this. You know what I'm saying? In terms of, he's got some great albums. Rap to me is a classic. 
And we'll talk to him so about this more of that like, later. Run the Jewels are both classic projects. Run the Jewels, yeah. Um, but this is like his magnum opus. It feels like that. It sounds like that. It's titled like that. It's yeah. titled like that. And the any and anytime you get, listen, I know I'm dick riding, but No, no ID, ID is him. He is. One of my favorite No ID projects is with James Fauntleroy. Remember Cocaine 80s? Cocaine 80s. Oh, yeah, what? I mean, and I can't find it anywhere. Like Because, it. because of No ID. Yeah. No idea is a weirdo, yo. I'm telling you. He's, not, he's so, so Oh, yeah, he's like, the other weirdo. Yeah. Them two niggas together. <laughs> <But then when laughs> it was, that music will never be anywhere. Dude. I tried to tell people I, about it, and people are looking at me like I'm smoking crack. I'm like, you didn't. It, no, because they both two fucking artsy head ad. They artsy, and we music rights. They know everything in music. No, I'm not giving you this album label. I'm not giving you this group. Janae Aiko was in it. Common was in it. It was yeah. so good. If I recall correctly, that was SoundCloud shit, right? It was yeah. So, yeah, it that was SoundCloud shit. It wasn't. You got um, it. Who, me? It. I got, I got I everything, got cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> I know you got it. Hold on, man. What, what, what you want to hear? I'm going to need you. Uh, I'll let you hear the, the, the first joint that did it for them. Oh, no, I'll let you. This is my joint right here. This is summer 2012-ish. One of the best summer ever. Something. Whenever it was. Yeah. They put out like two projects, three projects. Yep. Short EPs. All short EPs yeah. of all original and no idea Greatness. it was him before even this. Like, yeah. This is late. Oh, long no, before. Yeah, yeah. But the combo. All of them was before yeah. this. Yeah, no doubt. But the combo of him and James Fauntleroy was Crazy. like finding hidden gold. You know what I mean? And you can hear like Chris Brown when Font Font James Fauntleroy sings because Chris has literally said he's like his favorite songwriter. Mm -hmm. Like he loves when he comes on board. James Fauntleroy did uh, uh, that Justin Timberlake album with all that good Timberland shit. The, Justified? The, no, 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 no. The twenty twenty. Yeah. Okay. The first one. What's the twenty twenty? Yeah. The uh. Da, 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 you mean da, da, sexy back? Mirrors. No, no. no. Twenty twenty oh. is mirrors suit and tie with Jay Z. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. That's that's a little later on. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, James Fauntleroy is him. Back to Killer Mike though. Man. I don't even know what to say about this project. Uh, just listen to it. Just listen to it. It's really good. Yeah. Damn, I wonder if he did this all indie. I think he did. It doesn't say uh major underneath it it sure enough don't that's oh that's, that's probably fine. why he had to pay all that money out of yeah, pocket no doubt. no doubt go ahead, kill him mike man or go can't ahead. wait to kick it with him uh yeah. kiana lady yeah dropped i ain't listened to it yet but I'm a i, huge I fan. listen to half of it and it sounds great <laughs> Let me check. i don't know who that is yes you do, yeah, you do. yes you do it's r&b girl you played it before she's she's great she wanted him Mm -hmm. She wanted a newer class R and B great writers, turnt singers. That she's just real good. She's amazing. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else dropped? A lot of R and B dropped, but I, we can get to that at another time because I haven't listened to everything. Uh, but shout out to everybody, man! Shout out to everybody that dropped. Let me see here. They hit say, boy dropped a project with his pops. I ain't listened to it yet, but that, that's super fire to me. Okay, oh, his yeah. pops just came home. We put out an album with him. That is dope. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, Ombre dropped. Oh, yeah. I did see Ombre I did dropped. See, I didn't cop. I got to cop that. Bought that. Uh, Alex Vaughn. Ooh. Sir. Oh, damn. Fabo. Alex Isley. There's, there's a lot of R&B to get to, and you know I'm going to get to it. So we'll give reviews uh, We'll give reviews next week. The Kiana yeah. shit is my sleeper, actually. <laughs> Who is that? Oh, that's my, my sleeper. My dumbass. <laughs> Who is that? Oh, that's my sleeper. The Fun Cast. <laughs> my uh, that's what. Uh, shout out to all the musicians out there, man. I appreciate y'all doing it. I, I appreciate the feeling that I get on Thursday night when the music drops and it's something you've been anticipating. That, right. that has never died since childhood. So and thank, thank you. you for finally coming this year with some music. Jesus, it's been a right? tough year for me. Yeah, we heading into July. What the hell y'all waiting for? Word. It doesn't feel like we're heading into July it either. Don't, it don't, It really do feel like the, the year just started. Outside of the weather, it just, the shit is flying, my nigga. To me. Yeah, it got somewhere to be. I don't know. It's moving like it got somewhere to be. That shit crazy. That's what happens. Yeah, because my vacation is July and, and this shit is creeping shit, up. Yeah. Next yeah. month. Mm-hmm. Shit is. Shh. I'm ready, though. You know, I'm a fall. I'm, bring me to fall. I'm a fall dude. Bring me to fall in the winter. No I, actually, I actually plan on kind of staying in the crib a little bit this summer. Like, I ain't got nothing crazy going on. Send some little white kids down there ruin Great Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas turn little dirty ass kids. They got Great Adventure looking a mess. Don't you dare go there after five o'clock. You know, what's wrong with you, dog? Uh, nothing. I've been to Great Adventure after five o'clock. Talking <laughs> my fright night. Yeah, I was frightened. 
Yo, it worked. You said last. You said last year it was a whole bunch of bullshit. You step foot over there if you want. There's a mess over there. <laughs> niggas will rob you. Niggas got their guns in Great Adventure. Like, why, you, why do you need your gun here? <laughs> it's a kid's park. Word. Oh, man. Come, come on, let's out. talk about something where we can get these two involved. Wow. Man. Come on, come on. Let's pass the ball over here. You know they ain't heard no music but Anita Baker. <laughs> 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 they, they ain't heard nothing that came out. He ain't even heard his sleeper. Uh, what's the most important? What's the most important? What's the most important? Come on, let's get the. I see you. That's the that Sukiana topic is burning a hole. It really in you. is. Come on, come on, let's do she it. She wanted to start. Yeah, the let's get. Yeah, let's get right to on. it. Come on, let's wake it up. Wake it up. Come on, Mel. Come on, Mel. I mean, you and MC Light was talking over over <laughs> lamb chops about this shit. Well, no, it came up in conversation. It was like it was a table. Um, you know, five five of us ladies were just you know um, in, enjoying dinner, and it came up in conversation because it's everywhere right now. Um, What's everywhere? Okay, so Sukiana, if you're not familiar with who she is, she is... A lot of people, see, and this is where a lot of people are not familiar with, I'm not with her. her. Yeah, so, I'm not all the way familiar with her either. Same. same Z's. Because we always know. That's it. A little bit. Yeah. Um, so she's a rapper, but she also has an OnlyFans page. She leads with, you know, sexuality. Um, apparently her OnlyFans page is pretty graphic. Um, Did you subscribe, or are you just hearing that from word I'm, on the curb? Uh, no, it's it's just it's being discussed widely, everywhere. You know, you turn a lot of, and I'm gonna get to that. A lot of people are justifying the things that have happened to her because of the fact that she leads with hypersexuality and that she has performed sex act, acts on her OnlyFans page, apparently with her boyfriend. Um, okay. So she was just at some kind of event. She was sitting at a table. Little Duval was on one side, and I'm not sure who was funny sitting Funny Marco. It. And Funny uh, funny Mark. It, Two comedians. Fre freaky, is it Freaky funny Marco? Funny Marco. Fun okay, I'm trying to <laughs> get everybody together, right? Okay. <laughs> is it Freaky? Is it Freaky Marco? Okay. <laughs> no, it's not Freaky Marco. <laughs> So YK Osiris is he's Meek's artist, correct? <laughs> oh, yeah. we, we old as I have, <laughs> you know what I, I don't listen. He's the doofy nigga that was running he's around running Drake everybody. House for fucking three months and ran running up on little baby that everybody said, "Oh, you owe me money, you owe me money." That's who I know him to be. Yeah. Okay, I haven't heard any of YK Osiris's music. My son has. Mm -hmm. uh, I have uh, my little cousins, uh, my girls' kids. The kids have heard. His mm. music. Okay. Gotcha. I think he's an annoying little nigga who every time I hear his name is for everything outside of music. Right. I've been off of him. Got it. Long before this. So the only reason why I asked is because Meek sent out a series of tweets, which I will get to in a second. So anyways, they're at this event. She's sitting in between Duval and Marco and YK Osiris walks up to her and he grab he puts his hands on her shoulders and then he grabs her face and he sticks his tongue down her throat. Ugh. She does not know him. Um, and she was visibly uncomfortable, but she was also, you know, giggling. She just, it was really cringy to watch this thing happen. And he did it more than once. And then he walked away and he was smirking and smiling and, and whatever else. People lost their shit when they saw this. And then the second thing that happened involving Sukiana was she was on Candy's podcast, um, which is also a very sexually based kind of conversation that they have. Okay. And her co-host, um, he was body turned into Sukiana and basically just asking her like very lewd questions. I mean, it's a sex based podcast, but still it was very, you know, well, if I did this to you, you know, could I eat your pussy and all, all this stuff that is just like this isn't really an interview. And then at one point, Dick Size comes up. Candy says, you you know, you, uh, you must like 10 inches or something like that. She was like, no, I'm good with five. Five is great for me, blah, blah, blah. And her co-host pulls up a picture on his phone, we assume it's his dick, and shows it to her. And her face is literally like, looks at the picture and then just looks away. So in these two circumstances, we saw her looking really uncomfortable but not knowing exactly what to do in these circumstances, because she got cameras trained on her. Right. And then this gets out into the public forum and everybody just starts discussing it. And since then, she sent out a tweet basically saying that she was afraid at that moment. Um, and she just didn't, and she didn't know how to do, and didn't know what to do, and didn't know how to react. Since then, everybody's released a tweet. YK Osiris has issued an apology. Tweet, Meek's been tweeting. Everybody's been talking about it. 
But the primary conversation in comment sections has been either one, consent, consent, consent. There's no discussion past that, that word and that, con that concept. And the other half is people saying, if this is how you introduce yourself to the world, then you deserve what you get. No, that's crazy. And it was Amber Rose piped up in this whole situation. Um, it was, I've got a couple of the tweets here, I'll read them. Um, this, is, uh, this is Amber. Are we really gonna sit back and let this happen to Sukiana? She was sexually assaulted and no one did anything. This is the entertainment business and she is an entertainer. Using her lyrics and her persona as an excuse to physically touch her and force her without her consent is absolutely disgusting. What happened to protect black women? I cried when watching that video and I'm sure a lot of women have as well. Um, uh, Sukiana's exact tweet was, I am hurt and I'm scared to stand up for myself. That was the tweet that she'd issued. And apparently she's kind of deactivated or temporarily deactivated her social media accounts because okay. of all of this stuff. Um, YK Osiris, his apology uh, was, I don't have that. Mel, yeah. Can you, Mel, Mel, yeah. Mel. Okay, enough, yeah. enough okay. with your phone. Okay. Okay. What do you think? <laughs> Um, I'm on the side of uh, consent is consent. Like just taking somebody's lyrics um, or, you know, what she does on her OnlyFans page, you know, it, it's a form of entertainment. Whether we morally agree with it or not, walking up to a woman, grabbing her face and sticking your tongue down her throat, is, that is sexual assault. That's disgusting. It's gross. Yeah, it's really gross. I'm with you on it. And there was... There was I mean, there was a lot of women saying the same thing, you know, um, of how you introduce yourself to the world is how they're going to treat you and that sort of thing. And it's like, it's just, it kind of blows my mind in 2023, even after hashtag me too and everything else. And just like the, everybody's, you know, um, changing or, or elevated concept as to understanding what consent actually means mm -hmm. and also understanding that sex work is a paid profession, whether you agree with it or not, morally or whatever the case is, it is a paid profession. It does not mean that you can walk up to this person and act like they're a fucking fire hydrant and piss on them, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was kind of difficult to watch. And I know exactly what she meant by saying, I was afraid and I don't know how to stand up for myself. Because these are the kinds of things you know, not to that extent, but that people would try with me. And all I did was do music videos. But you'd swear the way that I was treated back then, I was doing the exact same thing that she was. Mm. You know what I mean? It's just like the, the idea of, um, you know, what's con respectability politics and what's considered moral and amoral. It's, mm. That's what the conversation's really about. And also, what was disturbing was to see that no man came to her rescue during that whole situation. No one said, hey, yo, 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 chill, get off her. What is your problem? No one did anything. They all laughed. And it's like, there's a saying that every woman knows a woman who's been sexually assaulted, but no man knows a rapist. Mm. Like, I never heard that. I've never heard that song. I, well, because it's something, it's something that women know. Bro, how would we know? Well, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, it's, I never heard that. But, it's very much um, a gotcha. To, to your particular point, I saw it. Mm -hmm. And from initially seeing it, I thought they knew each other. Right. So I could see how Duvall or Marco wouldn't... Because from the looks of it, it looked like they, they knew each other. Once I read a little bit more and delved a little bit deeper, it was like, oh, wow, my man is bugging out. Yeah, I'm not going to absolutely kill Marco and Duvall. Yeah, because it looked... And she was smiling. Like, when he walked away, she it was a nervous... Like a smile? I she should have punched him in his face. I can't speak to that because there are many different coping mechanisms in that moment. No, that's what I'm saying. Person. So we, she looks we can't scared. watch she, and say what somebody should do. She damn, she ran underneath the table. She just damn, she damn near was stuffing herself yeah, like, under a table. She should have punched him in his so face. So if bro. you freeze in that moment or if you laugh to mm -hmm. try to play it off, the, the to try to say laughter. not only your yeah. face but his face as well, True. we are the oppressive event. It's famous people True. around. It's nothing but cameras in front of me. I'm a new, uh, new uh, aspiring mm -hmm. act. I got some heat out there. You're somebody. Now I got to think about who's backing you. True. Is it gonna halt? True. Is it gonna put a halt or hindrance to my career? True. How she reacted in that moment? No, I don't, don't want to. No, touch. I wasn't knocking her reaction. 
I wasn't knocking. Yeah, I know reaction. you're talking about it the was laugh, mad, the it, laugh, it, and, and what you it could said. Look at it. it was a nervous laughter. It wasn't a ha ha ha. That's my boy but laughter. If, right. But if you are a man but to in the that moment, you don't know if, if you a man it. right there. You yeah. assume that they fucked. Yeah. yeah. You assume that they you fucked. Do. Yeah. You do. And when she says, because she did verbally say, "Stop." Mm-hmm. If you're an onlooker, maybe you thinking that she don't want that in the public in front of you. Y'all fucked and oh, she don't, I don't want fuck y'all. I with you like that no more. You know what I mean? Something to that effect. So I'm not going to totally go in on, on them two. Uh, was there more that should have been done by them? I think absolutely. Whack 100 is already on the internet calling them all types of pussy ass, bust ass niggas. Mm-hmm. Calling who? Uh, uh, Funny Marco and, and Duvall. Bill Duvall for, for them just sitting there. But why am I? I'm not gonna talk about them when I'm, I'm on Doofy Dude. Yeah, I'm yeah. on him still. It's him. Yeah, yeah. He um he issued he issued an apology. It kind of sounds like a publicist wrote it. It's no I want to read the Meek tweets. Dog, it's no apology this was, that you can really give though. In my opinion, that it suffices. You walked up to a stranger and started kissing her. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. Well, you do need to apologize. I know. <laughs> I'm saying, but it's nothing that you can say. I don't care what your publicist writes. That's gonna justify that but you go meek says y'all drawing a big line between men and women nowadays on social it's getting bad in the black community all this internet superficial shaming judging gaslighting only hurt us people and it's a lot of people who need strength especially young black men he might got a rumble suki brother anything but this same internet tear uh tear each other down stuff suki can get what she wants she feels uh she feels violated but let me mind my business and protect suki osiris you a dh a dickhead I'll uh, go back to church, stop following the heathens. It was a weird hill to die on. That up. was not his first tweet, though. His first yeah, he tweeted more. Yeah, his, yeah. his first tweet was way more sympathetic for YK Osiris in, in the vein of, like, there's something like, please don't, don't kill him. Yeah, please yeah. Don't, don't. He made yeah. a mistake or something. Exactly. Along that line. Unfortunately, this is part of why Meek is my favorite tweeter of all time. He's really tone deaf. <laughs> He's really, really tone yeah. deaf sometimes. Yeah. And this, that, this wasn't the right tweet. No, it wasn't. No. This wasn't the right message. No, it wasn't. It was it was terrible messaging and it just there is no tearing down of like black men and women in this particular subject. What we witnessed, that was clearly a sexual assault. It was. That's it, it call a spade a spade. It was unwanted physical sexual contact from a total fucking stranger in front of a whole audience and now the world has seen it and now they're I think there is a tear down black men and women subplot in here I just don't think now is the time to address it yeah, I, I don't think it's applicable here. Yeah, yeah I don't think well, it's yeah, uh, I don't think outside so. looking in. I don't think this is tearing down black men. I think this is tearing down a black man that did something foul. Yeah, I, I think you got to draw the line. Like sometimes um, there is an agenda. Or sometimes there's a, a broader conversation. But for black men, I think sometimes you got to kind of start putting your foot in some of these young niggas' asses when they do dumb shit. Like, that's the real accountability piece. That's the real black men putting on for black men. If we want to talk about John Morant or if we want to talk about YK Osiris, I think sometimes the black men need to put their foot in these young niggas' asses. Whether private or in public, you, they do need a foot in their ass, whether verbally or physically, because that's the real accountability piece. You know, I was, I'd was i written something down and it kind of applies to this. Like, you know, we don't like to let, and I'm not calling anybody in this situation an idol, but just for the sake of conversation, we don't like to let our idols go down. We lean too much into, you know, what I'd written, we lean too much into how they're being treated versus the actual act itself. Not being, not separating the act from the person. You know what I mean? We do that on a lot of shit. Yeah. We do, we, and unfortunately, this is the broader conversation. We do that with race issues. We do that with um, gender issues. We do that with all of that shit. And sometimes some of these women be wrong. Sometimes some of these races be wrong or these religions be wrong. And we, and we kind of conflate the issues and I don't think that's a good thing. Like your OGs need to put their foot in your ass. Yeah. Yeah. It was... I understand that you could reason, you know, hey, we don't know the situation between the two, but perhaps a different, you know, scenario you err on the side of caution and be like, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, you, you guys know each other. Is this cool? A lot. Of- 
a, not, you know it's you know it's interesting. In that moment, man. You want to know what's interesting is when I did the primetime special with Light and Angie Martinez and June Ambrose and Sherry and and Lola. The last question that was posed to us that that Angie kind of threw up in the air for us to answer, and all of us really had no answer was, what can men do, you know, in hip hop to support and or protect women. You know what I mean? Because we started talking about like how women have, you know, kind of um, banded together and supported each other's careers to uplift, et cetera, et cetera. We started thinking about like how can men be of more support or whatever the case is. And it was interesting. We really just collectively didn't really have an answer. And I feel like it's an answer that can only be asked with men in the room. I was about to say that. You know? No men in the room. So I kind of pose that question here. Like where, how could that situation have been avoided because every man literally was just like, eh, threw the hands up. I don't know. It ain't on me. I think, I think it's not me. I think the biggest piece is listening. Right? So mm-hmm. it's three dudes here, four dudes here that just literally answered the question mm-hmm. that went on deaf ears. Do you think that if it was somebody else sitting at that table, do you think that if maybe it was like, I don't know, Megan Good sitting at that table, I'm just, I'm just picking a name out of the clear blue sky, Megan Good or um, um, Logan Larice or Brisha Webb, somebody, if, you, if it was anybody else but Sukiana, do you think that there would have been a different reaction from the men around them? No. I don't know. I say no. Yeah, I'm not even going to speak. It's hard to no. even, it's hard to even um, um, fathom that situation because I don't think that he would have had the gall to do that with someone. But it, bigger than that, and, and we, we can move on because we say repeating ourselves. Uh-huh. Dog, the onlookers don't know the relationship that these two people have. That's the biggest piece. They don't know that he don't know the girl. Nobody really it randomly just walks up and starts tongue kissing somebody that they don't know. The crazy part is they, they were sitting at a table and it was like, was it like some kind of press conference or something like that? Like, were they announcing It was some, some basketball. It was, yeah. Press, I don't fucking know what that shit was. Right. But I it's saw just, basketball that said Crew League or something on the table, so I assume that it was press for that. Gotcha, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. But even for him to even kind of like walk up was really, what the fuck are you doing here? You know what I mean? Like, that's just the whole thing was the whole thing was. Well, no, funky. he's a celebrity and he it's a borderline. He's a borderline it's a celebrity thing, yeah. there, and this is the press. You want all the celebrities to walk sure. up there? Okay. No, no, go ahead and kill him because I see you trying to kill him. Kill no, him. yeah, I just kill him. Yeah, I, just, I just think that the, the the explanation that the men just gave, mm-hmm. you didn't pull it in. Like, dog, nobody would think that he didn't know the girl. Mm. F ish. I'm I'm not a celebrity, but. I'm I'm kind of popular now. If I'm walking in a spot where celebrities at a table and I walk up to the lady and start kissing her, somebody's gonna assume that I know this lady. Mm-hmm. If, if why Joe, does it? Why does it go? And I'm 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 y'all ain't getting me. Nah, I don't y'all want to either. I, yeah. not, she's trying to get. I'm not. Uh, she's she not getting me with this. I don't want to. But what I will at, present is, yeah, we need to discuss what black men can do to help black women in entertainment. But why does nobody say anything about the company that's throwing the event? The company that's throwing the event. Oh, the their, li- their that, liability that, in the, this? The, the, yeah. Okay. The company that would be held liable mm-hmm. needs to know what, uh, what sexual harassment looks like, mm-hmm. what sexual abuse looks like. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had other YouTubers and people try to run on that press conference and security tossed them niggas like, uh, uh, Jazzy Jeff, Jeff out the house. <laughs> really? <laughs> they tossed them right out of there. Mm-hmm. So you have uh, barriers in place. Mm-hmm. But this is a famous kid, so you're not going to handle him mm-hmm. that way. But that is on y'all. Mm-hmm. That's on y'all to staff events properly, mm-hmm. to hire the correct people and not shortcut. That happens a lot where we shortcut and we cut in expenses. So, yeah, we're not going to have the... Cor- but, what? but I think it's the same thing, Joe. I think that, again, this kid is famous. Uh huh. If Joe Button walked up there, they wouldn't stop you, right? They wouldn't stop you. Mm-hmm. They don't know if you got a relationship with the girl, so you wouldn't do it. But let's just say Joe Button walked up there and but started. He did, it, he did it twice, no? Yes. I would think that after the first one, they would maybe stop taper yeah, in their it little twice. earphones and be like, "You got to understand." What I'm okay? saying is, what I'm saying is cool. I receive what you're saying. Yeah. 
There needs to be the same way that these companies have women in place to direct. Same thing the NFL had to do. We had to go get some women to teach us and tell us how to handle women, care for women, and treat them when they're on set professionally. Mm -hmm. Professionally. Mm -hmm. There should have been somebody there specifically to make sure that the woman shit that has been popping up for the last few years is being protected. Is We're protected against that. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then after we discuss that, I think we can get to, hey, what should black men do as onlookers if you're ever in that situation? And mm -hmm. this needs to be just a teachable moment for all. Yeah. But I didn't see where the big debate was. Flirting is not consent. The end. I don't give a fuck how much he was flirting with dude. Yeah. Word. It ain't consent. Like, what? where are we debating? I don't... The, to me, to me, and, you know, glad that everybody feels the same way in this room, there is no debate, but it is wild to see how many people truly feel because of her persona and how she has, you know, conducted herself or whatever the case is, that somehow she, this warranted she, that she egged it on. That God. she egged it on. And but that is all that that we don't I don't want to harp on that because that yeah. has always existed. And yeah. people victim blaming. Mm -hmm. Hey, what did she do? Hey, what is she wearing? She was asking for yeah, that, mentality. That, that's that's the people crazy. that think like that. Yeah, they think like that. And they just been thinking like they out there and they're monsters. And yeah, be banned from the earth. Yeah, but you, you, we talking about young people that's running around getting money in different places and meeting other famous young rich people for the first time and different companies. We track that. That's what I'm addressing. Mm -hmm. I'm not all that, all that other shit. That middle of the country shit. They, I don't know. Uh. Yeah. Well, you got it out. You yeah. No. 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 I just. It was. I mean, it was. A, it I'm was, sure it was triggering. It was. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah. A little bit. A little bit. It's young. Young niggas doing young dumb shit. Do you think that? Do you think that a, it, his behavior warrants a charge? And now, and this is what Meek was talking about. This is what Meek was talking about. He did not see anything wrong with his behavior, and to me, that's a lot of a problem. It's, that you that, that you that you could that you don't know that that was not fucking okay and that that was a criminal act so you want him to go to jail i asked i posed a question I'm does anybody you, do you think he should get charged yeah okay w women will feel like that too if, if, if that was your little sister but that might have been you get what i'm saying like i mean if it's, it's if, it's, if it's your sister then, if it's then, your daughter it's if it's your line. mom it's if it's your line. aunt if it's your female relative yes that's you, i think that's it's how you line. all will feel yeah that's assuming that's assuming, but I, it's a fine line. I think if you think he if you, you think he should be charged, then you can't dismiss any of Meek's tweet because this is exactly what Meek's tweet was was talking about. <laughs> Look, I don't think the boy should go to jail. I really, honestly, I'm, I, we 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 can keep it a buck. I think he deserves his ass whooped. That's what I really think. But when you start putting these kids into the system and all other shit, it might go a step further. But I definitely believe he deserves his physical ass whipped. There should be some repercussion of some sort, but. I'm, I, I'm not mad be. at the women yeah, and, fulfilling and like there, that. And there will be. I'm not mad at the women fulfilling like that. We black men, and we know that what the system and all of that shit does. But I'm not mad at any woman that feels like he's Neither am I. in charge. Neither am I. I'm not mad at them for that. But it's a loaded question when you start asking black, black men. men. Okay, true. let me ask you guys a question. Let me ask you guys this, this question. Have, oh, she ain't going to get us out of here. Have you? Because <laughs> I, I really, I, I, I thought about this last night. And especially after what I just said, every woman knows a woman who has been sexually assaulted, but no man knows a rapist. Do you all, and you don't have to reveal any, obviously no names or anything, is there ever been somebody that you were cool with, friends with, that you saw the way that he treated and handled women that you were like, yeah, I, I, I gotta get away from this, this dude, he's on some next level shit. Me, translation yes. meaning yeah. he's rapey. Yeah. Yeah. He's rapey. Mm -hmm. There's somebody, so you understand that this is, this is, this is our daily existence. We are taught to, when we're walking to our car, hold our keys in our hand. We are taught respectability politics of don't wear this in order to not attract that kind of attention. We're constantly taught that we have to monitor and alter and safeguard ourselves, have a hypervigilant um, hyper vigilance about our personal safety because of out of fear of what you know 
what a man might do to us. You guys aren't, you guys don't live like that. That's how it is for us all the time. I was having a conversation with girlfriends last night where we talk about all of these safety precautions that we take in our daily lives, you know what I'm saying? And also another thing that we fear is rejecting a guy. Rejection, rejecting a guy sometimes will cause you physical harm or death. You know what I mean? It's not just, you're lucky if you just get, oh bitch, you ain't all that. You, some women will get spit on, honk, kicked, shot, whatever. These are real situations that happen you know. to women. So when I saw Sukiana and I saw her level of discomfort, you know what I saw? I saw exactly what you saw, what you said, but I'm going to say it differently. The fear of offending, the fear of affecting his life in a negative way, the fear of who's attached to this scenario on the peripheral knowing that it's not just about me. It's not just about what just happened at this very second in time. I've literally been on a radio show where somebody like groped me, grabbed my fucking boob. Like, you know what I'm saying? It just, this, this, was, this was wildly triggering and it was just insane. And it was a literal sexual assault taking place in front of an audience. And yeah, sexual assault usually should result in, in, in charges, yes. Yes. All right. I challenge the audience out there. Honestly, ask yourself, who has the funnest podcast cast out? <laughs> honestly, can, can you name a fun crew than this? Huh? Come on, think. Really think. <laughs> we are amazingly fun. <laughs> we are. We are awesome. I, I tried. I tried to get this idea twice. <laughs> I thought you talked about it with lighting them. <laughs> she wanted to come for us. She wanted to talk about she it. Was, she wanted with, to press dark us. them. <laughs> oh, she said, no, 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 but I want to ask y'all. No, 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 no. This conversation is important with y'all. What you think? <laughs> she tried to. See those rain God clouds coming damn. through? God, this bit is a weird. You, you, you bought the clouds. <laughs> you can't even produce through it because you say low. You can't tell it. You, you got to shut up. Say you got to shut, shut, shut up. You got to shut up. Yeah. I, I tried to spit this off in a oh, job yeah. rant with my little yeah, young nigga doing dumb shit. Flow. Oh, I ain't seen a white man. woman yet tweet Conor McGregor should be arrested. Mm. I'm not here to bring up hey, race. Yo, it's dog, the weekend. I got fun shit your, to talk yeah, about. Well, stop I got fun shit. To, the, I got fun shit to yeah. talk about. Listen, dog. I got fun shit to talk right, about. Good. There you go. Hey, actually, not straying too far from this conversation. Shaquille O'Neal, Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Or purple. How did not Fifty Shades of Grey? Mm. Let me tell you something. If I did it, it would be bad. It would be bad. <laughs> oh. No washer and dryer in the world. Oh, my you. Lord. How did that creepy act? If I DM'd a young woman oh, man, yo. and ain't getting no rhythm and I was at her job the next day Let me ask you a question. in a Home Depot apron spitting one of the hardest verses I've spit in the last few years, and buying people washing machines and, and dryers? <laughs> oh, they would have my ass. They would have my ass, buddy. It would be really different commentary. But it's cool. Y'all told me. And you know what? I'm about to go off now. These fucking stupid people that write comments about this. I hate their fucking guts. Let me get my shit off. Oh, you can tell Joe's Joe. I can't believe Joe's take on that Home Depot situation. Whoa, I can tell he's dealing with the escorts and the whores. And the, oh, my God, his thinking. He doesn't know a normal girl anywhere. I am so shocked at what he... Holy you shit. fucking idiots. I can't be reading this. I can't believe people are so fucking stupid. I'm wrong for saying that the content creator should want to keep in touch with Shaq. Is that what they said? That's what they said. That's well, what they, said. They, they were saying that you were implying that she should fuck I didn't Shaq. imply a thing because I, I said take sex out of it. Platonically, there are a million reasons why that young lady would, should want to have a line with Shaq. There's a bunch of reasons why she shouldn't have been as short as she was taking sex out of it. You are a content creator. This man owns mad businesses and invests in people and, and is marketable. He gets on. He does. He, this is the perfect person to speak to if you're a content creator. True. And he landed in your shit. He's a walking business. He's a walking business. He is. Not only that, he helps the young people. He, he helps, he the helps young, everybody. He helps young, old. Helps everybody. everybody in the world. Could have at least got a washer dryer out of the situation. That's what I'm saying. 
Ah, you stupid idiots out there. Sha- Shaq might have wanted to tumble her dryer, though, yo. Well, that's his business. <laughs> yeah, he might have wanted that's, to put her in the spin cycle. I, I mean, that's on him. Well, then you got to learn how to dangle your pussy properly. <sighs> and, this and that's is, where they call that's me. What they call that's, me. That's, well, why? That's I'm a guy. Call. I'm a guy. I'm a, and a realist in today's generation. There's girls out here dangling it. That's the flip side of all that mushy shit that Melissa just said. Mm. <laughs> No, it's another flip side, but I ain't one. I know. I'm not doing anything. She ain't tricking me today. This is a fun cast. <laughs> uh, yeah, Shaq went back over there, started rapping, started buying people things. The verse was great. The He's verse mad was fire. tall. It was. The verse was fire. I ain't gonna he lie. had the apron on. I think he bought Home Depot. He had to buy that apron. He might have bought 17 Home Depots. <laughs> No one else. Here come no Just in case. Look at the internet. Oh my God, this is so fire. This is so cute. Wow, Shaq is the man. <laughs> that been I almost drove right down deeper. <laughs> I almost I wanted to see. I wanted to just do a little test. Bump, bump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can't hate. <laughs> uh, nah, it would have had to be a new verse. That was a new Shaq verse. He killed that shit. He killed that it, shit. He bodied it. Shout out to Shaq, man. That's shout out, shout, shout out, shout out to Shaquille shout O'Neal out. and shout out to Home Depot, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And washer and dryers. They was it, yeah. They said that, she said that she had, speaking of the girl, she said she had to quit. She said. Yeah, Melissa, I don't care. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't care. She also <laughs> said she's mad that she doesn't have brand deals. Girls full uh, from, of shit. From all the. Um, that girl's a cloud chaser. From the, she's, yeah. From and, the increase bad, in, of her popularity. And a bad one. Yeah. She don't know how to dangle that either. Oh, Jesus. She don't know. She want brand deals, but she cut the Shaq conversation short. Right. <laughs> See what I mean? Hey, Redditors, answer that one, bitch-ass niggas. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, that's one reason that should have been a little extended. Oh, my God. All right, what else is going on? What else? Oh, John Morant got what? 25, 25. games suspension. That's official? Mm-hmm. That's official. What a letdown, Adam Silver. You suit me up. I thought, I thought we had a big one coming. Yeah, you thought the hammer was coming yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. I was waiting for he it. He could have announced that right during the finals. I don't know what he's talking about. He, he could have put the finals. 25 yeah. games. He could have put that right on the bottom ticker. Yeah, it would have been fine. Easily. Yeah. 25 games. 25 games. Hey, she sat out more games than that last year. No. He had nine? No, I mean, he didn't play in is what oh, I'm saying. Yeah. Not for suspension reasons. Yeah, between that. And how, do, how do we feel? We feel it's too less, right? I mean, too I, little? I, I think so, but shit. If Adam Silver pussy, he pussy. Did yeah. you guys think it was going to... That's my man, too. Let me not take that back, because that's my man. Adam Silver or John Morant? No, nah, Adam Silver. Do you think that he deserved the year suspension? No. I'm not going to say that. No. He didn't I break, he didn't break the law. I think he would have sent a, a solid message with a bigger than 25 uh, Like half game. the season. Yeah, something. Money going money. Right. He's a star. Yeah. Miles, what's the name, got 30 games for that shit he did. Miles Bridges. How does John Morant get 30 what did, games? What did he do? I won't, I won't say. I'm not cute. Cu- cu- he did something bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> chill, cause, Yo, stop. Cause you I'm do your doing. little dumb voice. Come on, come on. Um, I think 25 bad. games, I, I thought it was going to be half the season at least, but 25 games, I mean half the season, yeah. might potentially take them out of playoff contention. We can't have that. But they last year, and this is just – me being basketball, but they played better without him. I'm not better, but they won mad games without him. I just think that he's too much of a star now. I think with LeBron on his way out, um, Ja is one of the hopeful faces of the NBA, and they market in Ja. This just this just furthers the theory that well, this cements the theory that Adam Silver is really a players commissioner. Yeah, yeah. He David, is, David Stern would have tore his ass up. What? David Stern yeah. would have. David Stern would have sent his ass to the PGA. <laughs> to write the Dubai yeah. Yeah, right Going to over there to Saudi Arabia yeah. Go ahead L.I.V yeah. <laughs> Yo nah David Stern would have taught What? He wouldn't have played with him Yeah nah But I think um, I think Adam Sel- Adam Silver Well they said I know That Adam Silver uh, Sat and got the opinions Of the Players The commission So I think the commission Might have been as lenient And maybe Describing that you know, These young kids Because I've heard a, a bunch of things That were compelling um, to how these young kids are out here now. Say what? Moving around. What you mean? Like, uh, it's it's unfortunate that these young kids are growing up in a hip-hop era that really glorifies guns and violence. Even more so than we've ever seen. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. more than we've ever seen. And it's a cool thing to do. So you, we all know also, and I'm not, I'm not caping for him, but rap music, 
athleticism, it all kind of ties in. All of the professional athletes want to be rappers and the rappers want to play ball. Yeah. So it kind of ties in. And this is what these little kids are out here doing now. All of the little kids. My little cousins be sending me turquoise guns. I didn't know guns came in colors. <laughs> <laughs> Dead yeah. ass serious. They got they the clip that's that facts, is though. turquoise. Yeah. That's facts. I'm like, yo, what mm. the fuck? So they, they like... It'd be see? good kids with them, too. Yes, they like, they really are... Um, they got a fascination with just violence and guns, yo. And the shit is crazy, and rap glorifies it a little more than when we were coming up. We Rap glorified drug dealing when we was coming up. It did. But now it's glorifying just taking a nigga head off, and these young kids are... are, are I always get so triggered when we put it on rap. And dog, rap is a very big influence in the urban community, Joe. We can't lie about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not blaming it on rap. I'm just saying it definitely plays a part. I'm with you on the okay. influence in the urban community. But once we start talking about guns and fascination with them, we mm -hmm. still in America. Yeah. Right after pussy came guns. Yeah. Not the fascination. Shh. America a, is fascinating. A few, I feel like it's a few things first. are bigger than guns in it. Cars, money, women. I watch. Gar guns listen, might be fourth or fifth. I watch enough History Channel to know guns was never fourth and fifth. While everybody was chilling in their respective hoods, mm -hmm. the niggas that had the real guns and could access the real guns came and took your shit. They took over. And the only difference was y'all had slingshots and we had guns. This it's has a, been the, the Gatling gun. hundreds of hundreds. Of, and then when you got guns, our relationships enabled us to get bigger and better, mm -hmm. faster guns mm -hmm. that shot farther. The and Gatling gun. It's, it's always, it's always yeah, been yeah. Guns. guns. Power yeah. and guns. So... Yeah. Correlation. Where do you think these niggas is getting? Nah, it's Saturday, man. I'm not doing this. Mm -hmm. But niggas ain't just getting guns. And when dude, uh, when dude almost shot me in the head and, and tossed the gun, when the cops found that gun, they thought I was lying because black people shouldn't have access to this gun. That type of gun. Whatever gun he had, uh -huh. nah, it's, it's not a hood gun. So what really happened, Joe? Like, oh, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> They're <laughs> making up a story. Some German shit. <laughs> it was a fire gun. He had some heat. Thank God that jammed. <laughs> oh, shit. These the ones that don't jam. That's what they said. These this this ain't supposed to jam. I started talking to God. Jam. God, you did that shit if that jammed. I think um, in the John Moran thing, I think 25 games might be too little. I think they should have hit him with a half a season. I think they should have hit him with a half a season just to show, like, yo, dog, we not playing to all of the new dudes coming in. We not playing with none of y'all. So y'all idolizing him, this is what he got. And if we could do this to him and he's one of the up-and-coming faces of the league, we're going to really crack y'all. Don't come in here on no bullshit. Y'all better come in here tiptoeing. So I think that um, 25, he I'm got sure a gift. I'm sure he's pleased. He got a oh, gift. Oh, yeah, what? He got a gift. I'm sure he's happy. He got a gift. Again. That's, that's star power. He did. That's yeah, star power. Definitely. All right, go, John. Go, John. I dare you do it again. I double dare you. I dare you I, get your ass I'm out there with that hoot nanny. I ain't going to defend you no more. Because I defended him. Do you think bit. he does it again? Nah. Mm -mm. Do you think his name comes across at Adam Silver's radar at all this upcoming season? No. For a negative reason? No. I hope not. I, like, they're better, they're better they just showed the AI shit. They showed the AI shit when Philly was going to trade AI. And he was like, dog, that's the most focus I've ever been in my life. Because I wanted to stay there so bad that I, I put away all the street shit, all the side shit. He fuck around and have an MVP year. Yeah, because right, he was out there doing... Uh, Climbing on Jeeps like Mel. <laughs> That's where you got it from, you? He was climbing on top of that Jeep like Mel. Oh, man. No. He pulled his gun out. You pulled your guns no. out? I got it. I got you. I got Can't you. Can. Yo, Mariah Mills, you got to shut the fuck up now. She will never. You got It's over, ma. Mama. That was 100 a month. Mama. Mama. She's never shut Radio silence, yo. I know it hurt. I hurt. It hurt when you lose the big fish. Stupid. I know it hurt. I know you going through it. I know that these last few weeks quality of, of life has depreciated some. She's going to scare away the other fish. And I know it's painful. That's the bigger problem That's for the, her. Yo, you dodo. Uh, no, he cried when she sucked his dick. She'll be fine. <laughs> She'll be fine. Give her a little bit of time. They always bounce back. They'll bounce back. There'll be a, a new, there's a new, there's a draft coming up. <laughs> the yeah, draft is coming up. They'll be right there'll there. There'll be a new. New shoes and tight right dress. Right there. But Mariah. You, I'm, listen, She's you got to shut the... It's over. Mm. It's over now. You got all the pod coverage. <laughs> you got the blog coverage. 
You got whatever wire transfer he sent, tuck it and hold it tight. You better squeeze it. Hold <laughs> it tight. It. You better squeeze it. But you got to shut the fuck up. We tired of it now. It's a petition going around. We tired of it. Enough. Enough. Zion might be coming to New York, so. No, no. No. Yeah. Mariah done got Zion traded. Mm -hmm. Knew they was getting him out of there. They going to send Julius Randle ass right to uh, New Orleans. No, they not. Stop. Yeah, Stop right. this. Hyperbole. <laughs> Stop. Stop this malarkey. You just don't want to hear it. Yeah. No, it's not true. You yeah, will see. You know New York. I'm the resident Knicks fan here, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm telling y'all, that's not true. That that won't be happening. Mm -mm. What about Saquon? It's the it's the Robinson Cano, Melky Cabrera, Ice Ish. You think we sending? <laughs> we we might not be the happiest with R.J. Barrett right now. Mm -hmm. You think we bringing in your fucking best friend over here that happens to play the same position as the person that we just gave a hundred million dollars to? And you only played 39% of games the last however many years, and this new Nick regime has shown nothing but patience. You think we passed on Donovan Mitchell <laughs> for Zion? I hope not. It's not happening. And if you did that out there, y'all be thinking that the NBA is so uppity, uppity, and proper. I, I told y'all Zion was getting out of there. If you think the NBA heads, especially Nick heads, because they know what New York does to people, are not looking at Mariah saying, if he did that in New Orleans, <laughs> with that, with that, with that, <laughs> there is no way. He is going to step for zero chance. He will not be a pergola that he I'm gets not. over here with that country bumpkin bullshit. Yeah, yeah. send him right to Oklahoma. <laughs> he'll, 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 be, he'll file for bankruptcy. <laughs> he will quick, file for bankruptcy. Quick. Yo, quick. They are trained. <laughs> Assassins out in here. New York. That's true. They won't play with him. Gobble guy, they eat him right up. <laughs> eat him right up. He'll be skinny it, though. It'll be a chick that disappeared, got off the scene, coming back to the game. <laughs> we'll be like, oh shit, where's she been at? Yo. Red carpet with he, this goofy look, nigga. It might work though, because he might be skinny. Dad had that nigga fucked up and heartbroken. He'll get skinny He'll quick. lose some weight. <laughs> no, no, he will, he will lose some weight. That heartache guy, you skinny to the motherfucker. Even them dunks ain't been looking all crazy Yo, lately, uh, man. He, yeah, man. He better not come out. I'm telling you, take it from me. I'm on a list of about seven people that know. Yeah, they, 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 they'll tear his ass up, yo. They would. But save we, yourself. We gonna see. Save yourself. I know, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. Knicks do some dumb shit. We'll see, yo. Knicks ain't done something dumb in a little while. Hopefully they Knicks ain't done something dumb in a little while. True. They ain't done something dumb in a little while. It's been a little while. Uh, I got a basketball question I want to ask y'all before we move on to all of the rapidity rap, murder trial, killer, killer, gang, gang, bang, bang, shoot them <laughs> up, <laughs> uh, consent, flirt, like all of this fucking shit. Yo, I'm not qualified to talk about all this shit that they be at, want me to talk about. Y'all not either. <laughs> not, <laughs> none of shit? No. No, none of it. <laughs> none of this shit on the board. But anyway, uh, the number one pick, Victor, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Why, but, but he's Victor. You know who he is. Yeah, yeah, you know who he is. My question to y'all is, uh, this guy is being called arguably the greatest prospect ever. Mm -hmm. uh, we know what teams were trying to do to get the number one pick for him. Mm -hmm. He's an alien. He's seven foot six with Kevin Durant abilities. Mm -hmm. I'm about to ask y'all a really... Stupid question that requires y'all to project a little bit. My question is, are we sure that Victor Wap Babalu Bop Babop Bamboo <laughs> should be the first pick of the draft? Yes. I would say yes. Please tell me more. I, I would say yes because even if he's a bust, Right, even if he don't do shit, mm -hmm. his upside is so high that you can't afford to pass him up. Like niggas will start losing their job if they don't draft him, and he turns out to be good. I heard that in the Zion draft too. True. And his, now look, his potential was his potential was high. I and told y'all the other day that that's how they was touting Zion. Y'all oh, argue with me, but let me throw this out there before you continue. I want to interrupt you. Part of why New Orleans is talking about trading Zion is because they are really high on Scoot Henderson, who I've been talking about here for a while, who looks like a man-child. He's good. He's better than good. He's good. No, I, He's I, under Steph Curry's wing now. 
there's, there's footage out there of him and Steph Curry practicing threes. If he can get a shot. The word is that he absolutely killed his, his, uh, combine, whatever that what was that they camps. did. Yeah. Camps. Like, uh, step back threes, mid range. Like what, what we've been talking about, about him is jumper. Mm. He went crazy on. He's 18. He's built like a linebacker. He's faster than everybody and jumps higher than everybody. Are we sure that Victor's ceiling is higher than Scoot's? Yes. I'm not. No, I, ceiling? Yeah. I am ceiling, not. No, I, Joe? You I am not. You can't teach size. Somebody that's 6'2"? That, that's some I'm, old NBA no, jargon not. shit. Let, listen. You could be that tall and not be the best. Also, there's some perks that come along with being that tall, as you I mean. I mean, I'll, not perks, downsides yeah. that come along with being that tall. Feet, all. knees. Yeah, 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 come on. He's That's a chest. stick. Yeah. But I'm going to say this. Scoot Henderson's, you'll find before you find another Vic. I'm, and I'm not ready to say that yet. There we go. I'm, that's if the it's difference. just those two, I'm not ready to. I'm not jumping on that wagon yet. The kid from Alabama's tough. I don't care about none of the them. The kid from Houston is tough. They got some good pe- people coming out of this All that shit is cool. Draft. Scoot and Vic. Nah. All I, y'all I other niggas is second fiddle and vibe second. I know it's a deep draft. It's a deep draft. It's really a don't good think draft. I'm not trying to play nobody. Yeah, I yeah. know it's a deep draft. But Victor Scoot. I don't be sold on the. I don't be sold. All right. I'm not sold on watch, the point. Watch the footage of Scoot against I've Victor. Seen, no, I've, this shit don't matter. We will revisit this. We definitely will. Y'all have Victor as a lock for rookie of the year. Uh, no. See, I didn't say that. I said his upside is way more impressive than Scoot's. So if Scoot wins rookie of the year, that won't mean nothing to, to y'all. No, then you will be proven right. No, no I don't no, want to say that. Not right, because y'all are That's arguing upside. That's one year. True. Sure. You're right. I, I, we'll see. Where Victor has the advantage is San Antonio and Greg Popovich. Yeah, like, that organization, is, culture, system, all teaching. Of all of that. You get, you get the wisdom of how to play basketball that go along with your physical attributes. Which is why I wouldn't be surprised or shocked or whatever, or giving you the W if Scoot were to win because there's a chance that, like, they won't play him down there if he's not ready, Vic. Like, on a full-time suit, like, mm. most yeah. of the game, all game. Like, if you're not ready, they're you're not play. built. Yeah. Pop, <laughs> they're going to play him. No, no, they're going to play him, but. He's getting played. Pop, they team ain't that good. Um, and Pop calls the shots there. Mm-hmm. Pop does what he wants. In San Antonio, mm. you feel what I'm saying? So, the team ain't that good, but their yeah. team ain't that bad. They ain't that bad. They, they middle of the road. They middle of the road. Bad. They are middle of the road. And his reports. And they got some good pieces. And his reports that already that Atlanta is looking to trade uh to John, to Really, really. That's quick. Yeah, but we'll see. It might be a fire sale over there. We heard the same thing about Trey Young, so we'll see. True. I think that with this draft, it's about to be a lot of movement. It's about to be a lot of trades. I'm, I'm anxious to see. I want to see what happens with Bradley Bill. I can't wait. I can't wait. Can't wait to see it. I like calling Bradley. Everybody's calling Bradley. They said oh, Sacramento. Yeah. They said the Knicks. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I can't wait. He make a lot of money, though. He does. He makes a lot of money. He deserves it. Let's see where deserve. Dame end up at. See what's going on. Mm-hmm. I got to see what the Knicks do. Y'all got money, too. We got everything. Y'all got some bread. We got money. We got draft picks. We got Y'all tradable got contracts. We got Y'all everything. Money. Y'all got some money. We ready to rock. Uh, all right. What else is going on? Yo, the, uh, uh, the Melly Trow. The Melly Trow. The Melly Trow. I don't, y'all, I, don't think they, I don't think they can kill that kid based off uh, all this circumstantial evidence. They have all the evidence in the world except for a motive and a weapon. <laughs> and the um, intent. To prove murder, you got to have motive and intent. They don't really have none of that. No witness. They no. got a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> a song. Like actual shit. Yeah. What? Well, listen, the song, and I don't want to say this because to me it makes matters worse. They say the song came out before the, the murders happened. Oh. Okay. That changes things. Look, <laughs> more <laughs> circumstantial shit. Huh. You get what I'm saying? They, that's, they, that's... they are presenting a lot of circumstantial shit. They got, they got hey, we got uh, him DMing somebody the day of the crime saying, I did it. <laughs> 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 On Instagram, you read that, you be like, oh, we got it, they got him. We but did. we niggas. She finally gave you some pussy, dog. I did it. Right. Who's to say it ain't that? Right. 
Prosecution tried to introduce a whole bunch of old Snapchat shit to speak to this man's character. Uh, it's just a mess. Yo, it's, a, dog, it's a lot of circumstances. It's a shit. bunch of bullshit. And you could be a piece of shit. That don't mean I yeah. killed him. What I'm saying is, even if you believe that this dude did that, the case that is being presented is, you cannot, it's, this is a death penalty. Yeah. It's death penalty. Yeah, it's fun. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This is a death penalty case. You can't, you cannot take that man, you cannot take that kid's life based off these. Uh, and again, he could be a dirtbag. He could be a weasel. None of that matters. I so mean, when they start bringing the character shit in, it does play a part in, bruh. I, I think he be, gets a mistrial. I, yeah, I, I think he get a hung jury. Yeah. I think so. Could, depending on who the jurors are. Could you imagine that? You're, the, the man, your life being in the hands of my my lawyer, the prosecution, the, the judge. Twelve people that the I don't jury. know. I would be scared shitless. Scared to death. But I've been scared for a lot less than that. But, but that's a, the, he up there acting like it's a game. He's blowing kisses to people. <laughs> laughing and joking laughing and shit. Laughing and joking. Yeah. And I that, would see some of that shit, this is what I said with the Tory yeah. shit. Some of that shit just don't bode well. Some of these younger guys, I don't want to call them kids no more. I think they be having like a detached sense of reality, reality B. Like, even the Josh shit. Mm. Like, fam, you not too big. They could take this shit away from you. And I don't think these kids think that that is a possibility. You're right, and I agree with you, but I was a lot dumber at the age, too. That's what makes it tough. That's what makes it tough. At 18, 19... I didn't have what they had to lose. I was real lose. stupid, too. I was. That's true. Like, even... It, and, I, and I gave Josh some grace. Y'all remember I came up here and gave him grace? And sometimes it's like, yo, dog, what the fuck are you doing? I just think you can't kill that kid. Never, this. never, ever, ever. I don't. Never. I don't. Uh, what else, what else, what else? They say Boosie got arrested. Do we know what his charges are? No, they said he was fighting a gun case. Uh, that got dismissed. Uh, and the feds were there to pick him up on something totally unrelated to that case. Mm. He didn't put out a message to apologize to his kids, telling his kids, I love you. Then the report came out that he's putting his Rolls Royce up for sale, but that might have been an old, old post that might not be current. So I don't want to speak to that. Uh, but I don't know what he did. I don't know what the charges are. I know it's the feds. Yeesh. I, I know it's the feds. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't, that they didn't say what well. it is. Thoughts and prayers to the feds, yeah. Word. Dog, he stay in the motherfucking mix. Yeah, he was arrested by federal agents outside the courthouse as soon as his, it was a, his gun case hearing wrapped um, but it was also in the same courthouse as the Melly trial, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so yeah, he was, knowledge, yeah. and so he was attending that. Um, and then you know he put out a tweet that he thinks he wants to start practicing law because he doesn't want all his, his black boys to go down and that sort of thing. Um, but the father of um, Melly's victim was like just blasting Boozy for even showing up. Boozy's been really uh, vocal with regards to some of the evidence that's being presented against um, Melly. Like, yo, some, they got an eyewitness saying that um, they, they saw somebody throw him out the car. And he like, yo, if you wasn't in the car, you couldn't see nobody throw him out the car. Mm -hmm. Fuck, he was, he could have jumped out the car. Yeah. So. Oh, then, then Melly's lawyer bodied it when I guess at, at one point he, he got the uh, sheriff dude to say that where they said the bullet holes were was a speculation by them that they concocted it wasn't it wasn't precise like the defense lawyer is clearly doing a real good job mm. we'll see what happens with that uh prayers to everybody and you don't want to be a dick because somebody really did lose their life mm -hmm. you know two what i'm people. saying so two, we, people, two people, two people pardon me, lost their life so we don't want to be you know insensitive to that but you gotta do your job I hope they give that uh, that iPad white lady murderer the fucking life. Don't worry about it. iPad. See? See, and this is what they don't I mean. Be, they don't be getting the coverage. This is what I mean. They don't get the coverage. This is what I mean. I'm not, this is not the pod for it. You said another, you said another pod, I'll get to it, but there's real shit going on in, in the middle of the country. I'm gonna play this. I didn't want to play. Oh, it the woman that oh, I know exactly. What you, I know exactly what you're talking about. This woman um, walked up to her neighbor's. I'll let you go ahead. Yeah. 
the wo a woman's children were playing. I'll, I'll just play it. I'll just play it. Let me see here. Funcast. <laughs> Please don't just watch me talk to each other. This is a conversation thing. Right. So the woman's kids were outside playing. Um, and when the kids came back in, they said that their iPod, their, their iPad was gone. It was taken by like the neighbor's yeah. kids. There are no words. We are beyond. This is the mother of the woman that died. Broken up over this your This is loss. Whoopi Goldberg talking to the mother, Pamela How Diaz. are the grandkids? And what can you tell I'm us I'm going to let this whole clip play because it's important and needs to be heard. That day. Listen to this. On Friday, June 2nd, the kids were outside playing in an open field, a privately owned open field, as kids do. My nine-year-old grandson forgot his tablet. He went back to retrieve it, and Susan Lawrence was there to harass him. She called him racial slurs, said, this is not the Underground Railroad, you Oops. slaves. She threw a skate at him, broke his tablet, so he did what any normal kid would do, and he went home and told his mother. My daughter Ashika and my nine-year-old grandson went across the street to ask questions. She was met with a bullet through a locked metal door with her nine-year-old son standing next to her. My 12-year-old grandson had to make the necessary calls for help. So awful. I don't hear enough about this out there. I don't. Roller coaster. So Devastating. Then she continued, and it really fucked me up. I have four young grandchildren. The two oldest boys, they, they blame themselves. Oh, why? The nine-year-old feels as if he hadn't left his tablet. His mother would still be here. Uh, the 12 year old, he couldn't do anything to save her. Mm -hmm. He has already started trauma therapy mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. that was recommended That's immediately good. for him. I'm cutting it off before I cry. I don't hear enough about this. this Out there. Disgusting. I ain't know nothing about it. It was, um, this was like about a week and a half ago. It's. Black women who are murdered, go missing, et cetera, et cetera. These are stories that just do not make, you know, big headlines. They just don't. That's the reality of the situation. It takes Sean King or Amanda Seals or, you know, just activists who push the story up to the top for people to, and don't allow anybody to ignore it. You know what I'm saying? Like in the case of Trump and his indictments, it was, everybody just skated over the JP Morgan $290 million payout to the victims. Mm -hmm. yep. There's mm -hmm. stuff that makes it to the top that we listen to that's really just a fucking red herring. It's a distraction from what's really going on. And this story is horrific. This was, The neighbor was a racist piece of shit. I hope she, I hope she gets, I hope she gets the book thrown in her. What's, what state was this? Florida. Mm. No, because she's already claiming stand your ground. Yep. She already is. Miserable, just nah, wrinkled that, old testicle looking motherfucker. That one's not going to fly. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. She shot her through the door and, um, and she died like very shortly after. I would think there would have to actually be a physical interaction for there to be stand your ground. Yeah, that's not no, going to fly. No, you got to feel threatened. Yeah. She she's arguing she felt threatened by the fact that the woman came, came to, to her house. door and was on her property. And she can make up a whole dialogue mm -hmm. about what the lady was saying behind closed doors potentially. Um, I don't know Florida's laws that well, but Florida is run by oh, Governor we know DeSantis. Who run by. So I'm just saying I don't know what the laws are that would determine if this is stick or not. I swear to God, next thing next thing we're gonna turn around and this woman's gonna have like a fucking one million dollar GoFundMe I'm defense. Sure. He's on his way. probably already yeah. started. Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked. So. Well, because there's two sides to a coin. So again, you're going to always have those people. Sure. I don't want to mm -hmm. highlight those. That's true. Yeah. Fuck them. They have their own platforms to highlight themselves. Mm -hmm. I want to highlight these kids that lost their mom and this woman that lost her fucking daughter, daughter over her yeah. iPad and now got to raise these four kids and one of the kids happened to witness the murder and was right there over a fucking iPad. I want to highlight that portion of this. Once we get into, uh, once we get into, listen, homeboy was just indicted. Uh, Daniel, uh, what's his name? The train, the Perry. train murderer. 
What's his name? Um, Perry Petty. I forget. Fuck yeah. him too. Yeah, fuck him too. Basically, but yeah, he was just indicted <laughs> okay, for second degree murder. Should have his name, Daniel Penny. Penny. Daniel Penny indicted. That one is probably going to be a bit tougher. That's going to yeah. be a bit tougher. His dad is has got resources and yeah. connections. Yeah, mm -hmm. that part will make it tough. Uh, well, and there's other witnesses that say all right, dude was bugging out. So this is going to be open for interpretation. Mm -hmm. I don't think that any civilian should be able to uh, fatally choke someone. You could subdue me. In, you in could public. subdue him. You, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. but I don't. But yeah, yeah. I don't think you should be able to choke somebody to death. I don't. And if the police don't know when to stop choking someone to death, then how could you assume that a civilian does? Right. Mm -hmm. I don't like anything about that. Hopefully, justice is served in that case as well. Rest in peace to uh, the man that lost his life. Jordan Neely. Jordan Neely. The kids yeah. from this case. That is That really actually... But indictment ain't enough. Indictment ain't enough. Yeah. Indictment is not enough. So hopefully we see more on that as yeah. well. Word. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a, a guest. Indeed. We got a fucking guest I'm excited about, too. Same. I know y'all know I hate guests. I know y'all hate guests, too. Sometimes you got label relationships you got to keep. Sometimes one of these little young niggas be promising, so you got to. <laughs> Sometimes some of these little niggas is hot, so you got to talk to them. But we have a guest here. Oh, I said it earlier that uh, Mike was coming by. We haven't mm -hmm. fucking talked about his album, but now that he's here... You gotta have some theme music. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one half of one of the greatest rap groups to ever live in the building. Facts. We have a man that is also a part of one of the best, if not the best, collectives in hip-hop history. Correct. We have a man here who should be regarded as one of the best MCs on the planet. Mm -hmm. We have Killer Mike in the building. Round of applause. Mike, please, please join us. Join us, join us. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me just let this rock for a little bit. Y'all get Mike's uh, mic check right. Make sure he's good. Yo, yo, yo. New album, Michael, in your phones right this very second. Nigga rapping like his life depends on it. <laughs> hey! Hey! Dog, she bought a new bag a week. A week. <laughs> I feel that pain. Yeah. I feel that pain. And the price of them bags done went up. Yeah, they don't keep go going up. Now. Once Chanel went up, everybody went up. Yeah. Now these bags is five, seven, eight, nine, ten, Starting. twenty. Yeah. Start twenty grand. Yeah. Now even if you got twenty grand, you got to be on the list to get the bag. Crazy uh, this, shit. It's a lot going Crazy on. Shit. But ladies and gentlemen, hey. Killer Mike is in the fucking building, man. I'm excited. As you, as as you should now. be. We excited. We are honored. We are honored to have you here. We are Thank very you. excited to Thank speak you. to you. Uh, I want to start with congrats. Word. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I want to start with congrats. New album, Michael, yep. in everybody's phone right this second, earlier yep. in the broadcast. Yep. We spoke about it. We played some songs. Thank you. I spoke to you yesterday, but I had not heard the album. Yep. And now I did. And now I heard it. Yeah. Different conversation today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What was wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> People man. don't just rap like that, Mike. Oh man. I mean, Will that mic a little closer, please. It's it's been a it's been a journey. It's been a it's been a twenty year journey, and um and I say that proudly because you know a lot of times you know rap you get shamed, you know what I mean because of age or time or whatever. But my favorite rapper is Scarface. To me, you know since nineteen eighty seven, never dropped a, a whack record ever. Thanks. You know what I mean. So my well, thing is that, that's <laughs> course, that's what well, I that's my ambition. So <clears throat> I embrace it. But man, I just I, I didn't want to die, <laughs> and and. And people have not seen my truest potential, the greatest potential. So I had to do it. You know, I almost, I, COVID laid me face down on my face. We, right after Run the Jews for it is about to drop. We about to go on a world tour. We about to kill it. COVID happens. But I go home and catch COVID before they even name it. Okay. My man Butter, God bless the dead, his father, Robert Sr. died. I went to the funeral. I came home and I was on my face for two weeks I, in the bed, like thinking I'm going to go. And when I came out of that, I was just like, man, I got to. 
I got to do and something. And you didn't catch COVID again after that? I caught it one more time after that. I caught a mild case. The mild it wasn't bad. Yeah. No, no. Nah, nah, it, wasn't, it wasn't nothing after that. But me and Cuz Lightyear was working. Um, shouts out to Cuz who put his career on pause to a and the album. Mm. We was working on a, on a mixtape, like a villain's tape that was crazy. You know what I mean? It was just, you know, when you and your raw rap at home, boy, get together, y'all just said, we just gonna go crazy. Yeah. But man, I had these solo snippets and records and freestyles and he was like, bro, it's just time. Just go ahead and let them know and let's do it. And I don't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to go without people knowing, you know, it's like you get, you get talked about who your top five and tens, you get your, your, your tertiary, your secondary tertiary arguments and then you get your slept on. I got fuck that slept on list. <laughs> fuck that slept and you, on. You the feel slept on. List, you know you feel, I mean? you feel slept on? No, I was slept on. Yeah. Like, but do you, you feel slept Atlanta, on? You talk about Atlanta, you didn't name me in the first five niggas, you sleeping. Any, mm. Anybody you talk about, I done been on a record with it went crazy. Mm. But even the, even the younger fan, do you feel, do you give that to them man, too? Man, motherfuckers had they had to wake up. I woke them up. Usually, I wake up by showing up whoever you like the most. I get on a record with them and go fucking crazy. And that's and why we ain't by yourself you. yep, right and, and say, "Oh my god, I, I, I Mike, I never would." Like a nigga called me this morning on the way up here. <laughs> Good nigga, man. He called me. We all on businesses next to each other. He say, "Man, you know, I never really listened to you." I say, "Nigga, I know. You know, it's all good." <laughs> But he say, man, I listened to this three times already this morning. So I say, it's just time, you know, to to get off the. I don't want to be on the underrated list. I don't want to be on, on on an episode of Unsung. I want motherfuckers mm. to be like, oh, he was the one. And 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 anybody who the one this morning waking up, reevaluating what the fuck they did in the studio. Later. I was blown away. You know, you put yeah, work in. We all man. were. You put work in. You can hear it. You can feel it. Like this is not what a lot of people do now. Is just, you know, do what they do. Status yeah. quo shit. Yeah. You put extra work. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And you got to. You got to. I agree. Speaking of Stat Cole, like Stat Cole was one of the best rappers Shout to Stat come Cole. out of Atlanta, right? And motherfuckers slept on him. I always thought that was criminal. I'm Sai the Prince, one of the best rappers come out of Atlanta. Criminally slept on. I'm just stop like, I'm not motherfucker not gonna sleep on me. Slow down. Joe Joe and Sai got things. So No, Sai is one of the best rappers. No, he's one of the best rappers. He's one of the best rappers. This shit is like sports. But what I'm I'm telling him to stop, not because of the rapping ability of the people he's named. Yeah. yeah. That's undeniable for uh -huh. me. Stat quo, it was, you got to get in the right label situation with people who understand you and are willing to market what you do. And I don't think stat quo fell. He didn't get the right shot. Yeah. Like stat quo, stat quo put out, what are you, grits, girls raised in the South. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they was trying to market him just. I mean, they had me do Adidas. They do that a lot. Like, like I, I don't. Adidas won my record. It was an Outkast record they didn't use mm -hmm. in Columbia. Was like, well, we don't know what to do with Killer Mike, so we just give him, you know, by yeah, proxy. Yeah, Outkast. We're gonna but, encourage you to do and that. And I didn't know that, you know. <laughs> but that's what big companies do. But you, you gotta figure it out. And same, just, and same with Sign. Now, yeah. Right. Like yeah. you gotta be careful. You in that good music system. Yeah. You you got Kanye. You got all the support in the world. But then when things get a little tricky. Like, what can you lean on? Yeah. That's why I'm bigging up Gunner so much. Because thrust into this situation that he's in with the world against him yeah. and with seemingly no support, he showed up. He showed up as his album today released with yours is phenomenal. It ain't as good as mine. But it's I, didn't, love. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Hold up. Hold up. I didn't, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I, nah, I fuck. I, didn't say that. I just phenomenal. If, if phenomenal is he is, then what's the next word up for past? I like you. Yeah, that's, I like Mike that talking shit. that shit. No, though. I, don't I, don't, I don't think I ever heard it. Yeah, there ain't no difference because I haven't. And, and, and it's like you, 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 you stay humble and you expect it to come, but it ain't gonna come till you slam dunk on a motherfucker. Like God bless the dead. You know what I mean? A lot of motherfuckers then died waiting on the motherfucker to acknowledge him. I can't wait on that. Like God bless him. I fuck with God the Lord. I never took his pitches down out my shop. He was one of the first people to support the swag shop. His love. But th that album don't compare to Michael. No album that dropped today does. Michael, just that's a fact. Michael's that's your... I don't know if there's album this year that compares to yours. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so either. I heard four eat, songs eat, and man, I ain't gonna hey, hold man, My sister Jamal Monet, she brought out her titties. I was happy. <laughs> but <laughs> but ain't, ain't nothing comparing to Michael. <laughs> I love you know? it. And that's from the Girls of the Blue Flame. Oh, so they, man, they, they yeah. jamming Michael. They hit me this morning. What for you, know? you is the difference? You said, you said your A&R started as a mixtape. Yeah. For you, what is the difference today between labeling something a mixtape versus album versus EP? How does that well, count against you, against anything? I can't even say count for or against. I just know I, me and Cuz reached our seal and we put together a phenomenal mixtape. We, we had the samples. We had the we, we clear had the energy. You know, we had them clear. We had to, you know, it's easy to clear samples today. But when we went and got with no ID, it's, it's like 
that like was my being next a, question. It's like when you when you get to the point where you like kind of did all I can do. Now I got to go visit. I got to go visit Yoda. I got to go sit in the swamp with my with my jet fighter. <laughs> and, and Dion, what he what he showed us is that follow your instinct. Play with pros. Don't play with people who trying to get it to understand. Play with the people who are going to walk in the room, get it, understand, and go that direction and take you further. So when Damo came in to play bass, Damo heard the bass lines we had, but Damo said, well, t- quiet that. And then he said, mm. oh, oh, my shit. He went crazy. Uh, yeah. The bass and, lines? And, and then don't, don't chase every trend. Pick the people you're running with and go all the way through. Aaron, Aaron Allen Kane, Hannibal Burrs introduced us to her. Once we heard her once, we wanted to hear four, five times. So when it was time to sing again, we called her. We're going we gonna to let you tell us no, but we're going to make the call. Ty Dollar came in for one record. He left and said, give me two. You know, so when you're playing with pros, you play ball at a pro level. Mm-hmm. So play and deal with people who are, dare I say, better or have had more success, you, you're going to learn. It's going to tweak you. It's going to sharpen your knife. Killer Mike, most and, people and that's what I did. Killer Mike, most people can't get in touch with other people. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> I mean, that's most, people. most people can't find the people that's better than them or can help and like that. Them. Like, that's the thing I told you yesterday about even working, being able to work with No ID like that. No ID, niggas call and say, yeah. yo, I need you. And he say, get the fuck out my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Or don't ask. No. You, know? <laughs> you can't talk to that niggas on another planet yeah. somewhere. Yeah. So for you to even have access to the people that are on this project and for them to be so willing to give their best foot. Yeah. It speaks volumes. Yeah, to I've me. been blessed, man. I've been I've been blessed. I've been, and but you know when people say I got it out the mud, or people say they want it, they want it on their own merit, it's it's gonna take time. You're gonna suffer, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna bleed a little, you're gonna cry a lot. But if you stay dedicated, if you're a dog about it, like I heard Nip, I watched the old interview when he say essentially what he was is just tenacious. He wouldn't give up. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, I remember when Nip dropped that rap niggas, I remember calling Cuz, like, oh, Cuz done went crazy. Mm-hmm. Cuz, like, you know what I mean? I was like, man, he done finally found his stroke. You know what I mean? And I think that I have understood, I've become a better MC by being one half of Run the Jewels because I've developed a greater discipline. You know, after me and L did rap music, which was also 11 years ago, certified classic. Talk about after it. we did Talk that, it. I could feel the shift. I knew, I knew I was as good as I ever thought I was and I was better than I could be. I knew as one half of Run the Jewels that if I took the discipline that I saw L had in terms of production and in terms of what, how he took right, I knew if I, if I used that, that I'd be sharper. So going into this, man, it, damn, it wasn't hard. It was easy. Like I'm, I'm, I'm shooting from half court knowing the ball gonna go in at this point. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> as exciting as this is, wait till y'all hear what we do on Michael two and three, cause it's gonna be a trinity. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So how far were you in the album when you went to No ID? Like how what percent? About a year you- in. It took us about two, what, two years, two and a half years, cuz. About a year in. We was about a year in before we sat down and we was at Steak All and we was just like, Well, damn, we we done did everything we could do. We didn't what what do we do now? And I had talked to Dion about it, but he was like, When y'all ready, he had sent us the beats. We had was sending him right. He said, When y'all ready, come out here. And um, you know, about a quarter million dollars in, I went out to LA and I didn't tell my wife I was gonna spend another quarter million dollars. So <laughs> <laughs> she just seen the the account string like, nigga, what the fuck is wrong with you? you got another family in Columbia or something? I'm just like, <laughs> like, no, baby, I got a dream. I said, you know, I told, I used the analogy of Noah. I said, God told me to build a boat, you know, and and, and here we sit today. And, and them planks cost. Yeah, and yeah, them planks cost. Yeah, yeah. Hammers and nails. It's the ain't good cheap. wood. It's the good wood, baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you know, I, and she received that from you. Yeah, I, I mean, I got to pay her back. You know, white folk give me my money, I got to put it back. You know, <laughs> <laughs> she she gonna make sure. Yeah, yeah, she don't play my shit. She grew up in the projects. Her grandma ran the liquor house, so she a business. No, you talk about your wife all the time. Yeah, you I, do. I, I she don't him. play. Yeah. I believe him. You talk about him. your wife all the time. Him. That's fine. I follow you on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, I'm just sitting here, super fan. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate. I appreciate that a little bit. I just, I love, I literally love how you. You talk about your wife on Instagram. She is your queen. Yeah, it's easy. It's easy when you tell the truth. As she right. go to the flying with me, and you know what I mean. She mm-hmm. um, she let me be a man, and she encouraged that. I love that about her. You know, she ain't mm-hmm. she don't let insecurity and ego rule her. So and I, mm-hmm. I appreciate that. You know, because yeah. I, mean? well, I got a very beautiful wife, and you know mm-hmm. what I mean. No no surgeries needed. No extras. You know, she she do the shit I don't like. You know, she do the eyelashes shit like that. So, <laughs> you know, but, um, she, I, I'm blessing that she's confident in herself, and so. You know, she she we, we do cool things together. Can I, have a, I, I just want to take another fan moment. For, um, one of my favorite features ever that you've ever done is um, Kill Jill. Oh, shit. I was literally, I was blasting that in my car like two days ago. It is one of my 
favorite songs, and it's your feature that makes one of that song one of my favorites. Thank you, man. So quick story on that, because I just hung up with Big Boy, who, man, just thank him for, for like, anytime Big is in the studio, I just run through, and I just say, oh, this is what you rap, and I just drop verses. And just beat. <laughs> Big probably got a couple albums on me, but my mm. man, PK, Pretty Ken from the Attic Crew, the guys who discovered the Young Bloods. PK calls me out of nowhere. He say, hey, fat boy. I say, what? He say, fat boy, I got a record for you, man. I say, for real? He say, yeah. He say, it's a hit. He say, you just got to do this shit now. So I pull up to the studio, check it. I'm just like, oh, shit, this shit nasty, man. And um, then I say, damn, I can't use it, though. And he like, what? What the fuck you talking about? I said, I'm in, I said, I'm in the Run the Jewels. We got to get four Run the Jewels records. I knew it wasn't a Run the Jewels record. Mm -hmm. So I said, man, I got to give it. I got to give it to one of my partners and say, a partner I could tour with. And Big is constantly on the road. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I'm, I'm still just like, do whatever it takes for you to keep staying on the road. So I take it to Big. I say, look, I got a great record for you, man. It's dope. I say, I got one request. Just let me stay first. You know, I just let me stay first. Big is a pattern master. Him and... Guys like Wayne, Missy Elliott, they master patterns. I was like, I can't let this motherfucker get in front of me. He gonna come up with a pattern. And so I said, so let me, let me stay in big. Big did the record. He put out as a single. Took me out on the road, you know, and I still pop up with him. So I, I appreciate it. And I learned in that moment, you know, do what's best for what's best for you. And Run the Jewels is best for me. Mm -hmm. So I did what was best for my group by letting a solo record by lending it to my, my mentor and, and giving it to him so I still get to be a part of the record. But thank you, I love that record. You got some patterns too, though, now I think about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I, I know I'm good. You're I'm, very inventive as far I'm as your I'm one of the best all-around rappers in terms of, if you hear me on a song with Black Thought and Pusha T, it's not going to sound like the same guy that's on Kill Jill. It's not going to sound like Never Scared. True. not going to sound like, the, you know, the guy that's popping up and running the jewels. I pride myself on that because KRS-1 did yeah. that. You Styles. Don't, you don't get ripped. Huh? Oh, you no, I ain't, yeah, I, ain't, I ain't come to lose. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't. Can you tell me about oh, often, <laughs> often, off, often right? You know how niggas be like, man, I got, <laughs> I, got this, I got my nigga on this shit, man. It's nah, nigga, I'm nah. I'm, I'm showing up to show out. No bullshit. Yeah. I often on this podcast speak about, because it's fans listening, so fans only acknowledge your finished product. Yeah. I often try to talk about the feeling as an MC when one of them other goats come in to do the same song. Yeah. And some of the pressure that comes with that, what's he about to say? What's he about to do? Yeah. What uncanny yeah. ability he about to showcase on my shit? Yeah. Can you speak to us and me particularly about how it feels to know that three stacks is coming, new three stacks, flute, Japan. Yeah. Three <laughs> stacks yeah, my guy. Is coming. <laughs> That's my guy. Like, how does that... That's what pressure. comes it's with be that? Pressure. How'd you sleep the night before? When did you know this was coming? Man, when he came, he came, I literally called him just to say, man, come listen to the record. Because I care what him and Big Boy think. Like, they gave me an opportunity to change my life. Mm -hmm. And so I'm never going to, you know, I tell people all the time, I say, if we sit in the room, Big Boy say, I'm thirsty, I'm going to grab him grabbing some water. Like, because that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's my really, dog. Really he gave me, I understand the order, you know, that's my man. Um, so it matters what he and Dre think about my music. So Big had already gave me the thumbs up. Big had already gave me a great rate on Stank On You. So spotted at 250 and went to Stank On You. Um, <laughs> and when Drake was like, yeah, he said, I'll pull up and check it out. And he pulled up and checked it out. And then before he left, he said, you mind if I come back tomorrow and bring some oh, records? Yeah, oh and I'm just <laughs> like, so mind? you mind if you were? Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, I'm just like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, bring that goddamn flute, nigga. <laughs> and, um, he came back and, and Cuz had said, Cuz said, I don't care what he come back with, Cuz. We using it. And I'm like, what the fuck you talking? <laughs> Cuz, I don't give a fuck this nigga singing, doing carpets and food. We using something. <laughs> and when he played it, man, he played that. And I'm just like, the pattern was crazy. The beat was, and I was just like, God damn, like, shit. How I'm going to rap over this, this beat? You know what I mean? And, and that, the challenge is less about the other person and more about how do I make sure I don't let down the work that's already happened? You know, mm -hmm. like I don't want to be the, the, the stale piece of bread on the sandwich. Of the song. So after him and Future got on it, then that's when I felt the pressure. Because ain't nobody going to not like Dre and Future. How does that collaboration come together? It seems like an odd pairing at first. Um, it's, we're all if you Dungeon don't know family. about Future's Dungeon, history. Yeah, we're all Dungeon family. So it, Dungeon family, are, are, they're odd in these period. You know, this a, yes. mm -hmm. they're, they're, like, um, they're like the Fantastic Four. Nobody's alike and everybody's mm -hmm. superheroes. So... When when that when when I heard when Dre hit Future and Bear Loke them, 
and and future was on it. Then I was that's when I started biting my nails. Like, okay, fat boy, what you gonna do? You know what I mean? You got Dre with the super smooth, you know, all the ladies, all the ladies that are esoteric and go, you know, to the MJQ, you know they gonna love Dre. All the guys who wanted to be rappers and master blaster caster rappers, you know they gonna love Dre. Then future come in and it's just like, man. Toxic lyricism. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Fuge, like you know, Fuge gonna kill it, and then I'm like, okay, fat boy, what you gonna do? And I went in my A hey, man, I'm a MC back. I dropped. I did six or seven verses before. I loved what I did. Oh, I sure. liked a lot of you the other shit. You fucking right. But Talk about don't that. Get comfortable with what you like. Don't get comfortable with accepting good enough. The devil is in comfort. Mm. The devil lies in comfort. Time you get comfortable enough, that's when the devil of I lacked or I let myself slip that day. You know what I'm saying? And that's what the fuck happened. And I'm like, them other verses, literally, I remember like even like cousin and my manager, Will, me, cousin, Will are like a trifecta. I have a manager who actually likes music. They was like, nah, that one good. I'm just like, I call cousin next day like, nah, cuz, that ain't it. And then one day out of nowhere, the pattern just hit. And I was like, I got it. I got it. I knew I had that motherfucking, I knew I had it. And when we went in and did it, you got Dre and James Blake did his part. You got No ID doing Future's part. And then they called DJ Pauly in to give me the drum. Oof. And it was, yeah, come you on, they get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> it, 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 it was over. You have to I, relax right of, now. Yeah. <laughs> you I, have to I stop. knew I was where I was supposed to be. You know? <laughs> what are you talking about over the there? It's like Justice League super fresh shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> <on, man. laughs> I just want to play a little bit of this. Yeah, he started the verse like that. I'm going to Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He started the verse like that. I'm going to Kroger's. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all, nah, for real. I told him it sound like aliens in the studio. Yeah. You Dungeon family niggas are crazy. Word up. It's, a, it's an honor to be. My first phone call today was Rico Wade. Mm. So, you know, me and, me and Rico got a, I'm from, they're from Southwest Atlanta. And I'm from the west side of Atlanta. So the west side, me, T.I., you can see our, um, West Side has got a, a little more, a little more rough around the edges. Sometimes we use big words, but we're a custom motherfucker out in the middle of the street. You know, <laughs> South, <laughs> South, <laughs> Southwest Atlanta. You know what I mean? They're they're a little smooth and cooler. So over the years, you know, R R Rico and I have been on different sides of the street, not in a bad way. Just like, no, nah, I don't like that, Rico. You know what I mean? And mm. kill this. What you should do? But man, I was honored to get a call from Rico this morning. It just sounded excited, like like kill. I'm proud of you, dog. Like folks calling me. My cousin, Mr. DJ, called and told me he went crazy. His voice is the first voice you hear on that. That's Rico doing, essentially serving as the voice of Atlanta through it. But getting that call from Rico meant a lot to me. And I want him to know that today. Like, man, I got so much love, respect for him and Sleepy Brown and Ray Murray. Ray was serving as, as a ghost, essentially, in the studio with me and Cuz. Just he, Ray will come in, roll the blunt and say, I like what you're doing, but that don't sound Southern enough. If you're going to do it, it needs to be as cohesive as the chronic. It needs to be as southern as anything we were doing in the 90s. Ball and G, UGK. Mm -hmm. And then you just walk mm -hmm. back out. And me and Cuz just in the goddamn room like, fuck. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> Yo, but you say, that is exactly what I hear on your album. Yeah. That, what you just described. Like, beautiful art. But yes. the MC in me was like, oh, man, this sounds frustrating to do, to execute. This sounds like the greatest of the greats was in there saying, Nah. Not good enough yet. Nope. Put another beat switch. Do it right again. Here. Oh, yeah. man. And I'm going to tell Go you. Go harder. I don't like the concept. The honorable Ride C Ride it better. <laughs> the honorable C note. The fucking honorable C note. My, my fat boy brother who dress fresh and wear good cologne. This motherfucker. Man, I love him. And he's a goddamn asshole. <laughs> C note will come in. And literally just, I mean, I just thought I had did the most perfect shit and just say, you didn't say that right. Like, what you mean I didn't say yeah. that right? This one line. I'm like, nigga, you just heard. Nah, change that line. And he'd be right. You know what I'm saying? So keep, keep a team around you that wants to be excellent. They mm -hmm. don't want to be. Mm -hmm. C Note got that, that chubby kid chip on his shoulder too, like me. Like, like motherfucker, y'all going to see me. You know what I mean? And, I, and I, I just appreciate that. Like, because you need to be pushed. You need to be driven. If you get a foot, somebody needs to say you could have got another inch or two out of it. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd never make records the same again. I'm hating, yo. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am. I'm, I'm hating, man. And I could tell he had fun doing this shit. All the way through, man. All the way through. I had so much fun. We worked like a regular job. We was working third shifts. We go in at 10 at night, and we leave at 4 or 6 in the morning. We take the weekends off. Some mornings we say, I mean, some nights we say, fuck work, just go to the blue flying, get inspired. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's work. We, 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 literally, that's work. we literally just acted like guys working at UPS on the third shift. 
And it, it got more fun because it, the pressure was just on creating the dopest art. It wasn't in, I have to meet a deadline because it was coming out of my bank account. Mm. Mm. You know, it was, I didn't have, it, it wasn't in. It's I all ha- indie, right? Sorry to cut you. Yeah, it's all, it's all in. I, I partnered with Loma Vista now and they've been a great you know, partnership. Shout out to Tom and um, Ryan and, you know, um, Dart and Adam over there. It's just, it, it really the whole team. Every, the kids who work in digital over there are, are excited mm. and it's good to be a part of a partnership in which that excitement happened. So yeah, it started just totally out of my pocket. It right. was the it was the nigga it was the killer Mike nigga fund, and um, <laughs> you know, it, and it turned into this partnership. But but I put you know I put my money into it, I put my time into it, but I put my heart and soul into it, mm. and that's what made it fun. It was me and my friend, cuz in the studio. It was it was people like Ray Murray, Rico, C Note falling through. Just you know, it was you know it was getting Metro beats. I remember him and C-Note working. He just hit me out of nowhere just some, with some encouragement. Mike Will hit me out of nowhere just with some encouragement. So I'm just like, man, you never know what them positive words will do for folks. And um, You they, naming goats. Yo, yeah. I was about to say, yo. You name it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he just called my phone. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but even with Cool and Dre, man, like I, I just, man, I had known them since my first album. They was one of the last producers on my first album. Had I met them before, they might have did half the first album. Mm. It took me over a decade to get back with them, and we get back with them, we created magic. You know what I'm saying? So... I just wanted to make, before I got out of here, a piece of art that would give me, I want 10 more years. I want 15 more years. And this record starts that. Mm. It's a reset But My wife woke up and she said, happy resurrection day. Mm. Mm. You, know, you, are, you, are, you are born again. This is a new thing. You are, you are not the same artist. Wow. How is it She'll doing the sure late night shit word, 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 word. with, yeah, with maintaining the family life? Like, um, well, man, I got a I got an interesting family. They 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 crazy. You know, my wife hang out with me. She don't okay. sit home and wait <laughs> on me. You know, she don't hang in the studio as much, but you know, she might fall through. She might be on her way to the flame. You know what I mean? Okay. So, <laughs> um, you know, my 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 daughter who's twenty five now, she's just never slept. So she'll keep me in three in the morning. Daddy, what you doing? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I need some money. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it, it was it was no different than every working man. But I, I appreciated working those hours because it regrounded me in terms of I needed to feel like a working man again. Like when you hear me say, you know, I'm back to the uh, back to the dickies and bucks looking like I drive a truck, you know, that meant the world to me because I needed to put myself in the mentality of be consistent, do the same thing on a daily basis and good is going to lead to greatness and the outcome is going to be great on the other side. Mm-hmm. Discipline. My, my man Bear Loke tells me, I've lost 47 pounds trying to lose Congratulations. Right? Congratulations. So, Congratulations. Bear Loke says to me, joy, discipline brings joy and joy brings discipline. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I'm not instinctively a disciplined person. I don't like, I don't like conformity. I don't like rules and shit. But I can say the more I have set my own Parameters and, and, and guidelines, the, the more joy joy feel my life has become. Mm. You know? Tell us something about Killer Mike outside of Killer Mike. Michael, like, who is yeah mm. that, out out? No, not the album. Don't try. Don't you try. <laughs> don't you try. It. Don't you try. It. It's all right there in the album. Tell me, <laughs> nah, fuck that. <laughs> Tell me something about Michael, the person. What is what does Michael enjoy doing outside? Of music, if you have free time, collecting art and toys. Like I, oh yeah, some art. I, I nerded out on your art here. Um, Thank I'm, you. I collect art. I collect toys. I take pictures of toy cars. Um, I'm, you know, friends with the president of Hot Wheels. Yeah, that's like you one build of the them. Co- no, I, I used to do the model cars when I was a kid. You know, I have two dads. I have a bio and a non bio dad, mm. and my non bio dad's a toy collector and stuff. So he he's always in loud and encouraged that. So, but yeah, I like toys. They get along. It, yeah, of course they do. They, they, they both love my mama. They better get along. That yeah. part. Yeah, they, <laughs> that part. My mama was Straight a bad broad. I was about to say, she, <laughs> she made it. Yo, yo, yo. But you know what? I, 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 I respect and admire those men because, you know, having grown up, I'm not willing to share my kids. Like, we tried that experiment with my youngest daughter. Her mom got married and shit. I, tr- I was really cool with him and shit. Tried to be all inclusive. You know, he was, he was weird. I like him a lot. He, he was coached my youngest son in football, but he never just fell out of win. Like we raising this little girl together. So when they got divorced, I was like, "Don't worry, champ. I got this." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Back, back to just me and her, because mm-hmm. I don't, I don't like to share like that. But so I admire both my fathers, and that my grandparents raised me. They were both involved in my life, and they were always respectable and talked highly of each other. They never talked down each other. They never put, they never put each other down in front of me, and it was always. 
you know, my mama could be hell, boy, Lord knows, they had to have patience to deal with her. Mm. So they, they loved her so much that they poured into me, and I appreciate it. You know, Anthony That's and fine. Michael, thank y'all. Y'all my guys. Yesterday you spoke about, yesterday when we spoke, you spoke about your upbringing being very different from most rappers. Yeah. And so, therefore, your views come in. Can you speak to that again, please? Yeah, I grew up, you know, and most, I didn't understand until I started talking nationally how unlike the rest of black people in this country my life has been. I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, which you guys think start a lot of time popping with Freak Neat or with, with LaFace Records. Um, Atlanta's had a, a black middle class and rich niggas to be honest, 120 years. Yes, they mm -hmm. have. You know, Alonzo Herndon, Herman Russell, John Wesley Dobbs. You know, I could literally just name a litany of people that literally were the highest of the high in America in terms of influences. Vernon Jordan. When you start looking at, even on the conservative side, Herman Cain, when you start looking at a black child who's all his heroes and villains look like him. Mm. If my grandparents were arguing over politics, it wasn't all oh, I mean, white folk won't let her have. My granddad was like, this nigga <laughs> <laughs> got control of this budget, Betty. And my grandfather and grandmother be like, well, I'm still going to vote Democrat. And my granddad was like, fuck them all. You know what I mean? I grew up, I grew up in a world mm. that felt fair because my schools were black. My teachers were black. They went to black universities and colleges. They expected nothing but excellence out of us. I went to a school named for Frederick Douglass High School, put me on a pathway straight to Morehouse. Morehouse. Didn't have three white teachers my whole life. Didn't live under white rule my whole life. You know, when our white folks got money in Atlanta, that's, that's definitely mm -hmm. capitalism and politics work hand in hand. But they worked in a way that since Maynard Jackson, Maynard Jackson said, hey, I'm mayor of the city, you wanna do business with the city, you gotta have 29% black participation and ownership. All of a sudden, mm. all of a sudden, the bakery me and my grandma used to go to, the lady that worked there became the 30% owner of the bakery. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. Like, this is how this works. So I just grew up in a place where the possibilities for black children were endless. Now, you understood that class was an issue. I knew I didn't have the money, say, the Russells had. But I got the same education because I went to the same high school. And I knew if I applied that education, I would be the first. I would be the Herman Russell of my family. You get what that I'm saying? That was my next so, question. That, are, 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 you, are you, because you come from all of that, are you breaking any generational curses? No, because I don't have generational curses. Mm -hmm. My great-grandparents were sharecroppers that saved enough money. I just got the deed. My aunt sent it to me. 1948, they bought a 30-acre farm. <laughs> that farm is still in our family. I don't say that generational curse shit because it'd be an insult to my great grandmother and my great grandfather that worked their ass off to leave us something. Talk about it. So the little five hundred dollar check that the lumber company might send us in January, that ain't no curse. I just split that little five hundred, hundred twenty five per child, put it in the accounts. That's not a curse. My grandparents, we still own both the houses they own. I just bought my daughter a house behind my sister, so she lives in the same neighborhood I'm going that I grew up in. I don't accept the curse. Because there is no curse. There's opportunity. You know, do have, do, do, does fucked up shit happen? Absolutely. Yeah. Kanye should have said it this way. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. And I don't, you know, I don't, I don't comment on way. Kanye. God bless his soul. You <laughs> mm, know? Exactly. But I, in terms of me and how I view my life, what I see is endless opportunity. That does not mean I don't have challenges. That does not mean that I'm, I haven't walked through some valleys. But man, the, the peak of this mountain is beautiful, but I already see the next mountain. And to get to the next one, I gotta crawl back down Go in back another down, valley down. and then crawl back up. You know, um, I returned, I ran from religion. And I returned in a lot of ways spiritually to the lessons my grandmother wanted me to get young. And when I study characters, Jesus is one of the most amazing characters Real or not, whether you believe in terms of revolutionary love, he, he, he told his homeboys, man, I got to go fast and pray, man. His boys are like, man, I'm, we, we, we cool and we with you, dog. And then they went to sleep. They kicked it. So he, he, he up here. He by himself. He hungry. He in the desert. And the devil pop up and say, man, what's up, man? I, you know, you ain't got to do this shit. All these lame ass motherfucking folk. They ain't really believe in you anyway. I mean, they going to kill you. Man, just, just let me give you the world. And he holds fast to the mission. And the mission is simply to be nailed to a cross on the behalf of sins that's not even committed. And the last person he chooses to save is a self-confessed thief being killed next to him by the state. That is such a powerful message. Dare I not have the faith to push through hard times? Why would I complain? 
Why would I complain to God? How much of an insult would that be to my grandmother who was educated in the deep, dirty, rural South? How much of an insult would that be to my grandfather who had to drop out of school in third grade to raise his sisters and help his mother by working in a mm. sawmill? What kind of disrespect would that be to my mother who graduated with me on her hip at the same high school that I graduated from and they tried to push her out, say, go have the baby and come back and she walked proud through the halls. I just don't have it in me. You know, and I'm not saying that hard times ain't coming. I'm not saying that hard times ain't gonna beat you down, but hard times will shape you and make you, man. It take a fire to bend metal. It takes steel to start from steel. So I just don't accept that hard times not supposed to come. They gonna come. Has anybody mm -hmm. ever told you that you could, you know, you should be a preacher? Don't because do that. Don't I, do that. I, I mean, don't I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm looking at everybody. I'm saying else. preacher. I think you should be my GPS voice. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm, I'm so phone. ready to run through a wall right now. Where's some white folks at? Where are these white New Yorkers? God damn it! I'm ready to go. Literally, literally, I'm looking at everybody, and everybody's just sitting here like. Nodding right. and, and, and the shaking the head. And, and you, and you no. are a, a you are a captivating, Thank prolific, or you are an my, orator. Where do you learn how to do that shit, thing. big boy? Who taught you how to talk like this? Betty, <laughs> Betty Clunts, my grandmother. Oh, my Miss grandmother, Be oh, who they call her. Miss Betty? That's why the generations <laughs> fucked up. Niggas ain't got grandparents. No more. <laughs> Nigga, they got no big nana. Miss Betty said, "Nigga, they got nana. Nigga, no they grandparents forty. That, that ain't nana. That ain't that ain't that big, big nana. I don't want no problem. That ain't else. big nana. Betty was forty four when I was born, but huh? she she would say, "Boy, you anointed." And I'm like, Mom, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be anointed, mm -hmm. Mom. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to smoke. We can go to the blue flame. <laughs> and, and, and she said, and she would say to me, "You you can't run from you God. Can't run from it. You can't keep running from God." And I I just I didn't know what she meant, but I knew I was running. I was like a prodigal son. I was just out mm -hmm. in the world. You know, I was out hanging, man. I was rapping it. And, um, and I remember my last conversation, she, um, we were on our way to Michael's. She, Michael was five years old. We were on our way to a Black History event they were doing at her, at her pre-K. And um, her mom was married at the time. She said, my grandmother said, why don't you, um, why don't you let her husband adopt Michael? And I said, what the fuck you talking about? I, and I never, I don't curse on What the fuck you talking about? Why don't you say that to, to me? And we went back and forth. And, and I felt like, and I understand that that was her last test of me. And um, she said, after our conversation, did I hurt your feelings? I said, yeah. And this is something she never said, these two words. I'm sorry. You, she usually said, I beg your pardon. Or if your feelings hurt, you know, mm -hmm. too bad. But we were walking up a hill. They wouldn't let us drive up a hill. We were walking up a hill. And she looked at me. And she looked past me, and she saw something. I could see in her eyes, she saw something, she looked back at me, and she smiled, and she hugged me, and she left. Now, I had been fighting like hell to get my career going. And after she left, it has never stopped. Mm. And that's when I understood it. Like, she was in communion with God, and she was right. Like, I have a purpose. I don't know what it is. But I know God has a purpose for me. I'm on a journey towards that purpose. And I don't know where the journey is taking me, but I know I'm on one. So I had to accept that my grandmother was right. I can't, I can't run from God. God has some purpose for my life. I'm not going to pretend to have all the answers or no, but I know that I'm leading a purpose-filled life. And I and um, I wish I could call. Him. You done made me go to an Atlanta church. Nah, that should be. <laughs> you, know, you got a calling on your life. Go you got a yeah. calling. You be yeah, like, got a call. Yo, go ahead with that. You yeah, know, it was crazy like, though. Is, you know, I've I've heard it. I've heard it, and mm -hmm. and now you just have to accept that God mm -hmm. God knows. Mel, I think that Michael is a great person to ask your little trap trick question that you tried to get me is from Parks <laughs> with earlier about black men and protecting uh, black women. Yeah. So ABC is um, ABC Primetime is going to air a special um, commemorating um, hip hop's 50 years. Yeah, everybody's doing something, yeah, you know, for that as they should. And so I found myself in a round table with um, Angie Martinez, yes. MC Light, yes, June Ambrose, yep. um, Sherry Bryant, yep. and Lola Brooke, mm -hmm. and it was it was fantastic. That sounds like a dope. It, it was really yeah. great. The one question that Angie, you know, kind of threw up in the air for anybody to answer, and we all kind of found, like, we're at a little bit of a loss, <clears throat> is how can men in this industry, in hip hop, help to support women? Full stop question, or? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me, let me first acknowledge Shanti Dawes. 
mm-hmm. who was my first product manager. She went to my rival high school. She's my big sister. She's exited the music industry and now has Silence to Shame, which deals with people with mental health awareness, depression. I was going to ask you about so, Shanti as so well and the whole Shanti, mental health. Yes. So my leader since I got in this has been has been a woman in terms of the person who helped me get acclimated. Her mm-hmm. and Kawan Prather, um, who's a KP, famous mm-hmm. A&R. But I, I don't know the biggest answer, but I, on, a, on a fan level mm-hmm. and on a child that grew up in hip hop, my mom was listening to, to hip hop first with the Curtis Blows, the Houdini's and things of mm-hmm. that nature. But there was, this, there was this little girl my mom would come up here um, doing illegal stuff. <laughs> There's a little girl she met at about 14, 15 years old, and her name was Roxanne Shante. Mm-hmm. And Roxanne Shante was on her way to a boarding house um, up north, mm-hmm. and she gave my mother a picture of herself, not a, not a headshot, not a, and she sent it back to me, and she signed a record, and Shante was the most bad-ass motherfucker mm-hmm. I, as a kid, like you gotta think about it. I, I love the Fat Boys. I love Run DMC. But this girl, Roxanne Sante, was just f- so she's one of my biggest inspirations. Mm-hmm. And all along the way, Roxanne, Salt and Pepper, Latifah. Whether you start talking about going out south, Gangsta Boo, Trina, Choice, even Too Short, who would, people would label pimpish, misogynistic. He had enough sense to put girls on his records to retort. Luke and the Two Live Crew did the same thing. I would argue hip hop as an art form, whether it's the Funky Four Plus One or Forward, hip hop as an art form has been more equitable to women than any other art form because we needed the balance. There was always a retort record. Mm -hmm. If I'm the baddest motherfucking nigga alive was the song, then I'm the baddest bitch alive and that nigga served me was the answer song. Like, and I, and, and, and what I've seen in hip hop is We've always been ahead of the curve. Mm-hmm. And now when I see all these women flourishing in terms of the young women as artists, I admire that. But behind the scenes, I've always seen companies packed with dynamic, strong women. women. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you was around Rockefeller, you saw Emmanuel. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now Emmanuel's leading video over at the Capitol somewhere. Right. If, you, if you were at the face, you saw Shanti, and it wasn't just a one-off. Mm-hmm. So I would say... We always can do better. We always can get another inch out of the yard. But don't forget to congratulate ourselves. Angie Martinez's mm-hmm. name has held weight for over 30 years in this. You, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So for me, I just want, and, and sometimes we try to, you know, my grandfather was telling me, stay out of white folk business. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we want to be so in white folk business, and it's ain't you ain't white, you're just a white man. <laughs> <laughs> white folk business means corporate. The money, the people who control, mm. sometimes they put out narratives and we just run to be a part of the narrative. Mm. But women have been leading in hip hop. They aren't the lead of hip hop. Is I don't know who is the lead, but I know that in terms of from an organizational standpoint, who helped put the parties together? Who were the promoters? Who were the who, and then when you get down to the artists, who was better than Roxanne Sante when she dropped? Nobody. Nobody. Who the fuck was gonna talk shit to Latifah? Right. Nobody. You know, who was gonna try <laughs> Trina at her height? Who else could have talked shit back to Trick? Mm. So for me, we have, as an art form, been better mm-hmm. at it. And we should congratulate ourselves while pushing to be more. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's what I think. That's I got five you're, sisters, too, so gonna, I know when to shut the fuck up. You're going to be my publicist. Nah. <laughs> yeah, Mike, Mike gonna be my publicist. Man, shouts out to you and my, my boy Sleep, who I know since I said. Y'all got the, the, the Sleep. You reminded me of Sleep right now with the sound of the toes. Now, I like you, Joe. I fuck with Sleep. <laughs> I fuck with Sleep. Fuck with sleep. Time. You also player shit, uh, man. man. Listen, when you stopped me in that airport, that meant a lot to me. Oh, oh man, thank that, you. Bro. That meant a lot to me. You was sick as a dog. I was nervous about even stopping you. You know what I mean? But I, I really, man, you was always kind and gracious. I appreciate you. No, I always bumped into the best rappers in the world in the airport. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> never like in talking about my career, but in the airport, it's like, oh shit! <laughs> I, I'm you get for- money now. You moving around. On the way from Heathrow, no, I met I was Jay bad. I was bad. I was yeah. bad. I wasn't in. The, I wasn't my best self. I was in a bad mood. Bad everything. If I was in the airport moving around, I hated it. Yeah, <laughs> I hated it. I hated having to get on the plane, Especially travel, overseas. make some money, hosting, all of this. I hated all of it. Back then? Yeah, when, when I was in the midst of it. It beats but, you up, man. People don't like people nah, don't I understand heard. that part of it. I like, heard. I couldn't have done Michael moving around. Like, 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 um, what the old folks say, God has set you still. Set you still. Mm-hmm. And, that, and that's my grandma. So much of my, I talked to the Dalai Lama before he was asking my boys to suck his tongue. Mm. I talked to the Dalai Lama. <laughs> and, um, in person? Yeah, yeah, I'm not with that shit. You in know person? What I, mean? I did it on Zoom. Holler that nigga on Zoom. 
<laughs> so you ain't spoke to him since that, right? <laughs> nah, I don't fuck with nigga. You do that. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was kind of crazy. Man, God bless you, my nigga. Hope you put it together. But yeah, can't be asked, no, I can't fuck with that, my nigga. No sir. No, sir. But I um, <laughs> I asked him some advice, you know, on, on oh, how to put man. ego aside, how to people just to get along. And he said, you have to put your ego to the side, your thoughts, on, and just come in the room with love. And, and essentially, that was the same thing my grandmother had told me my whole life. And that's when I realized, nigga, God has blessed you to live with the wisdom you're seeking. So just, mm. just, just find it. So my grandmother tell me stuff like, God has set you still or when it's raining. Be still when the Lord is working. I've learned that essentially that's meditation. Mm -hmm. Essentially, that's prayer and, and looking in, mm -hmm. you know. And um, a lot of y'all folk who, who paying again, we don't, you know, white folk, y'all paying these big corporations for books and stuff and learning meditative retreats. Go listen to Reverend Knight. Go to YouTube, pull up Reverend Knight, and listen to what he tells you about God being in you and something divine in you. That that old good hair motherfucker was on his mm -hmm. issue. You know, my grandfather didn't fuck with him, so I tried not to fuck with him. But <laughs> my grandmama were right on that one, Granddaddy. But <laughs> she was right, man. I had a point, man. My mother so. ain't fuck with him either. What do you say to? Because I know you be on your activist, your activist political party. She's running around with Bernie Sanders. Yeah, <laughs> the old man. Um, shout to Bernie. Yeah, tell me, tell me, give me, give me, give me, give me some early predictions on on what this next election is going. to I have like. no national predictions. I would, and I would. I would say people should watch Cornell West for I'm what Bush? he's saying, and people should watch um, the Kennedy that's running for what they're saying, because they're going to say things that are off the map or off the grid, but they're going to they're going to spark you to think, and you should be trying to follow people who are going to make you think. You're still probably going to end up voting Democrat or Republican because those you know Always. that those are the mafia families that that mm -hmm. that those are the oligarchs, right? Mm -hmm. But I would listen to the people who are shouting dissent from the sidelines that are acclimated. So I'd listen to Cornell and I'd listen to the to um I think I think it's Ted Kennedy. I'd listen to the Kennedy. Um I'd listen because they're saying stuff that that is not the status quo but it's relevant. Mm -hmm. And um you know like Kennedy um, literally had some NOI members hit me up, just say, hey, I want to talk to you guys about vaccines. You know, he knew we probably just wouldn't listen to some white guy calling. So I'm like, oh, so what, what's the deal with vaccines? And I'm not saying I'm pro or against any of that, but it's just that I didn't know that vaccines affected black boys in the way they did. You know, higher, higher rates of autism. Um, studies hadn't been fully done. And I think it's important. And when people say, well, oh, yeah, well, shut the fuck up. My great grandfather's father was used in a Tuskegee experiment. Mm. Mm. So you can't you can't tell me yeah, what not yeah. to listen to because your family hasn't been harmed by the United States government in the same way mine did. Mm. You know what I mean? So I'm listening to everything and everyone, mm. but I'm listening to the people who are shouting dissent from the sidelines. Now, what I would in, in, encourage people to do is get off the national soap opera soapbox of who's going to win and Trump's going to take us into and Biden's going to and who is your city council the local, person? The local. Yeah. Who's hyper local though? Mm -hmm. Who is your city council mm -hmm. person? Mm -hmm. Who is your police commissioner? Who is the chief that your mayor appoints? What is your mayor's policy on affordable housing? Mm -hmm. You know, those are the things that matter because those are the things that are taught to you. And I didn't, I didn't learn this, you know, in a, in a political science class in high school or college. I learned this because my grandmother, who was fifty-four, I mean, fifty-four when I was ten, she was the person taking my ass to city council meetings, and mm -hmm. I got to sit there and listen to her and her friends talk, complain about the sanitation route until it gets fixed. Mm -hmm. And if the mayor didn't, add, the city council didn't work, she walked right across the hall and sit in the goddamn mayor's office until the woman, mayor's came out. Woman. Yeah, and it's just like <laughs> God, I'm gonna get an answer. Yeah, <laughs> somebody gonna get an answer. <laughs> a little two two so, kids got hit right here. We yep. need to stop something. Yep, yep. And they ain't gonna <laughs> poly till they get the stop something. And yeah. That is how political change happens. And I'll give you a perfect example. Chief Judge Asha Jackson is in DeKalb County. Asha's been my friend since we were 11 years old. Asha was, was damn near homeless her last two years of high school. But she was so determined, she pushed all of us to put in our college applications to go to school. She went to Buffalo, went to school, got a degree, came back home, studied law, is now chief judge in DeKalb County. She got tired of seeing people's life be ruined over bullshit, first offense, you fucked it up. She said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a program where I'm going to give you one year to straighten your shit up. Mm -hmm. If after one year you haven't straightened your shit up, then I'm going I'm to I'm send your ass to jail. But if you straighten your shit up, we're going to wipe that clean. We're going to get you, you know, we're going to get you your diplomas. We're going to get you, we're going to get you on an opportunity to improve. That system works so well that our now Republican governor appointed a Democratic woman named Ms. Ali from juvenile court over that program to be statewide. 
to end recidivism. So a Democratic judge gives a prototype for something that will work in a county, and a county known to nailing your ass to the wall too, DeKalb County didn't play. That prototype graduates kids that, that would have been, and not just when I say kids, just young people that have made mistakes. Mm -hmm. That program is now being emulated by another black woman, and that person was appointed by a Republican governor who happens to be a white man. Politics is not the Dallas Cowboys versus the Washington Redskins or the Commanders. Politics is in being pragmatic about my approach. What will help? Who can I ally with? And all your allies ain't your friends, and all your friends ain't going to be your allies. But if you start hyper-locally like Chief Judge Asha Jackson did, it can go st statewide when mandated by a governor that we have in now to another black woman who's now taking that statewide. And that's yeah. what I mean about do it hyper-locally and watch it grow. Whatever solutions are going to come are not going to come from the top down. The top is too busy worrying about the top, the top. shit. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's going to take from the, for the base to fix it. When you say we have free breakfast programs in public schools, you know why we have free breakfast programs? Because the Black, Black Panthers, Panthers fred kids for free. And it embarrassed the government. Black Panthers. The government said if these Negroes keep feeding these children, they're not going to listen to us. Mm -hmm. So we better feed them. Stay hyper-local and watch how the world changes. Speaking of feeding, mm -hmm. speaking of feeding, uh, we got to go hunting. Yeah, we do. I haven't been in some years with so my wife won't let me go with my white friends. So I got I, invited I, I, by some of my white friends, so, and so I won't, I won't go either. Do. <laughs> we're going to get a committee. We're going to, we're going to get a committee of like eight black oh, guys, right? Yes. So, and, and then we're going to get with eight of our white homies, and then we're going to go. We're going to go. It's going yeah. to be like a mix, uh, 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 like a uh, desegregation Boy Scout crew. Yeah. <laughs> we on it. We on it. I know. I, I definitely want to go. You, you have, you have cooks. Have you cooked things that you caught before? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm yeah, I, I, I'm a real traditionalist. I'm gonna kill, I'm gonna kill it, I'm gonna catch it, but I ain't gonna cook it. That's my wife. She's a good cook. Mm. Yeah. Can I ask what you've hunted and killed before? Mainly deer, um, okay. because when they, they overpopulate in the south. So mm -hmm. when you're young, your uncle will take you on a deer hunt. Hogs, um, not wild hogs, but we we slaughtered. They overpopulate in the yeah, south. Yeah. Imagine wild how they hog. feel about y'all. Yeah, wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they wild overpopulate. Hog, wild hogs a pivot. When I was younger, rabbit. Um, you know. But yeah, but whatever the thing is, whatever you kill, you got to eat. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to kill no squirrels or no is stuff. Is that like, like a rule? That's yeah, the, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. If you kill it, you got to eat it. You, yeah. got, you should. Because why you, you kill it? That's what they all Why you kill it? Yeah. Otherwise, you're just statistic. some people hunt for you know sort trophy. trophy, but yeah. I don't. I've, I've always considered that. I don't. I don't, I don't believe in it. Got yeah. it. Got it. That's right. Um, have you seen any of these headlines running around about uh, Sukiyana and the young man YK YK Osiris? I saw it come on. Do you believe he should be charged for sexual harassment since Mel wanted to pretty the question up with all that MC Light shit? I want to get to it. I want to get to it. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if he should be charged for sexual harassment. I know he needs to be educated on no meaning no. Mm -hmm. Fact. And, and, and I think that, that in this new age of men and women, we're going to have to figure out like our grandparents courted. Mm -hmm. Our grandparents had to court one another. Like, yeah. you didn't get to just be alone with the girl you liked. And, Mother sit right and, here and, in the middle of it when y'all yeah, yeah, sat yeah, on the couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a yes. famous scene in The Godfather when Michael, it's, it's, when he marries the Italian girl, mm -hmm. when he's courting her, he's walking, and then you see all her moms and aunts walking behind her. Mm -hmm. So we're out of that, and we're in the, we're in post that. So now it's just like, you know, you got to understand what's pretend. You know, I understand he's a fun-loving kid, but I don't think he understands that just like YK Osiris is a creation of your imagination, Sukiyana is an extension of her imagination. She's still a woman. And once a woman says, no, if a dancer says, don't touch me, don't fucking touch That's her. That's it. You yeah. know? And, mm -hmm. and, and, and with that said, you also know when you're involved in entertainment, those lines are going to be blurred and people are going to get it fucked up. And, 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 and it can be a teaching moment that's the grace. You know, that's the that, grace. Of that me. right there yeah. is the grace. Yep. That's what Meek was trying to speak to, mm -hmm. but he's the, he can't speak to it. I, I, but Meek be having good intentions. He be, yeah, no, no. He be trying to speak to it, yeah. but that's the yeah. part. Yeah. When you're dealing with entertainment, yeah. be ready for misunderstandings yeah. and blurred lines. Yep, yep, yep. And, yes. and, and, and I'm going to refer to my teachers. And it's not excusing that, him either. No, no, I'm not yeah. excusing anything. I'm saying, so, I'm just saying, no, we have to, or we don't have to, but I would like for us to show each other some grace because nobody else does. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody's going to show that black man that grace, and nobody, to be frank, is going to show that black woman grace. 
you know, they're going to use them against each other in some capacity. They're going to pit them against each other. But just like the dancers in the flame have taught me since I've been trying to sneak in there. Me, I'm going to go to the flame with your ass. Yeah, absolutely. You come <laughs> nah, in. dead ass. Yeah, yeah. They, but they, they, uh, they, a lot of them were women, and they taught us young. Hey, hey, if I say don't touch me, baby, don't touch me now. I'm mm -hmm. dancing for you. Now, this is what you hear when you're 16. Because yes, your little hands yes, dirty. Sir. You want to put them places they're not supposed to be. Yeah. They wash your nails. You, you get what I'm saying? They, yeah, yeah. Like, so, so, so we learned the hard way. We just didn't learn on camera. But, you know, I'm just, I would, I would invite people to, to just start having honest conversations. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To like, like talk to your big cousins who girls who attractive and say, hey, man, what's this like? What's, what's player? Because what we've lost is player. We don't mm -hmm. have to be players Agreed. no more. Yes, you know what I mean? Sir. No, we don't have They're players. not keeping it uh, P. That shit he yeah, did wasn't P. A player, a player. At all. After, and after the first one, a player would have said, oh, shit, my bad. Mm -hmm. my bad, my bad. I, I ain't no baby. I was just keeping, I was just trying to, you know what I mean? But, but I got to confuse. You can learn something from everybody. Look at our pimps. It ain't pimps on the street no more, but when we were young in Atlanta, pimp culture, so I worked PSC, pimp mm -hmm. squad, please. pimp culture was big, and I, we, our skating rink was right down Metropolitan, so you got you got the Purple Onion and Club Nicky's across the street. You got the skating rink here, and then on the off days, the skating rink was literally just a whorehouse. It was just Cadillacs and girls, and, and you get to watch, but you will see, will see a pimp approach a woman, and her few say, well, shit, I'm just trying to get you, but he never going to touch her. Mm -hmm. He not gonna grab her arm and say, "Come talk mm -hmm. to me," like some of y'all country motherfuckers when the girls mm -hmm. walking down the strip of Miami. Look, keep your fucking hands to yourself. If she interested, she gonna choose, and when she chews up, it's gonna be better than you trying to force. You know that gorilla pimp shit and that non player shit is just it's not player. So you go talk to your uncles who seem to be cool, but more than that, talk to your cousins, your auntie, talk to your mama, and that way you will learn how to be a player, man, about shit, and you won't take it personal if she tell you no, or she don't want to touch you and shit like that, you know? She doing the same thing you doing, she just playing a character, making sure her bag is there for her at the end of the day, you know? But I hope, I hope that they both, you know, I hope that he gets some grace out of this and learns and matures up, you know, I hope Sukiyana much, much success to her because, you know, they own her too. They say she she danced on a 10-year-old boy. They tell yeah, my boy. they want to yeah. charge her. And I'm just like, yeah, hey. Stop it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm stop just, it. man, I thank God my mama friend danced on me at 10. <laughs> Shit. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, big booty cutie. I, I appreciate you, boy. You ain't have to worry. But why? Why? Tell the audience why. Well, well I didn't know how to dance. And, and and my mommy taught me how to dance, but you can only get so with your mommy. And then her friend say, your mama said, but you put your hair if you That's like this. My mom said, my mom said, you put your hand on her waist, you hold her like this, and you know what I'm saying. But my, her friend said. But if she likes you, she's gonna do this to your hand, tell, tell and, and that's how that's how I knew that's how I knew she liked me because she put my hand on her. Butt. Mama, you know what I mean? Not her friend, but the girl <laughs> I was dancing with at school. Her friend gave me the extra, the game. You know? My oldest son, Mama, cursed me the fuck out when I asked some little young things dance with my son. Boy, Wait, was the, that a, the, the dad's boy, was that not a supposed to do it. That's what I'm saying, but, yo. But, but I, it's I, a I, fucking double I, standard going. The, the dad, but, I was but, trying to teach the vibe. It's a vibe we teach him. <laughs> they didn't, she didn't get that. Hey, listen. Right. She didn't get man, that. I, took, I remember calling my um, when my son Pony got of age. I said, hey, man, you want to go to the, um, you want me to take you to the flame? You want to? The Man, this little cool nigga was already in Club Blaze. He was like, I'm at Blaze with my friend. He was like, really, daddy? This shit kind of lame. I was like, for real? Like, you already play. Now, his big brother, whose mom is more in the church, was a little more square. You know what I'm saying? His big brother, I still ain't took to the flag. I'm like, this nigga lose his mind. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to destroy <laughs> my son's soul. You know what I mean? But I got to take him when I go home. Got to. He just broke up. He broke up and got back with his girl. So I said, I need to go. Oh. I need to go show him the only cure for breaking up with your girl is the you know, another girl in some capacity. So Killing they man. back together though, thankfully. Yeah, I might just take go. both on to the There you go. Together. Sound like you in support of the reunion. <laughs> yeah, no, I want them together. I like them together, but you can't keep breaking up with me now. I'm still a man. Like you break up, you got one or two time to break up. I mean, that third break up then, baby, you know, I'm a dog off the leash. Yeah, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna keep coming back big and playing no goddamn R&B song. We, I'm, cause, cause I'm me. I'm you still know him. Yeah, I'm, I'm still, still me, him. baby. Somebody want me if you don't. Maybe a couple. <laughs> Maybe a couple. Maybe a couple. You listen to RB? Look, look, psych. Yeah, I listen to RB. Yeah, I listen to RB. Yeah, yeah, listen to RB. Right. Nigga, you can't tell. I got Jagged Edge on the album. No, that, that, I that, love when that people put Jagged too. Edge on the album. Yo. Come on, man. Honestly, Sahai, you, like, yeah. when I see that, yeah. I'm like, come on. Y'all know what you're come doing. On, good, come good. On. And that track is hard, yo. You it's know, right. About teenage, I fell in love with the teenagers, lived like a dope boy for two summers. Got a girl pregnant, had to have an abortion, and un and learned that poverty was stronger than love. Cause, you know, she was in the projects and she was um, 
She was uh, trying to get out. She ended up right. getting pregnant by and marrying yeah, all this now. nigga boy. He's talking now. What? Man, poverty is it's stronger than love. love. Absolutely. That's a bar. Absolutely. I wish I'd have known that. Yeah. I thought love conquers all. And it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It don't. Forty five percent of these. Yeah, you, you better have a you better be in love with a empty. fucking jaw. Word. Yeah. You still a man. Like that's one thing I do love about being Southern. There are certain traditional lines that are just what they are. Like, you know. I don't care how much you love me, baby. You know you you got to you know you got to work now. I still got to buy that goddamn purse. Yeah, that's different up here. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's different. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's what Zion was doing, yo. He was trying to help him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dog. <laughs> Zion that's what Zion was doing. Zion. He better Shout not bring his Zion. country ass up to New Zion York. Zion bring his man, ass up to New York. Man, they gonna milk that just, bank oh, account man, dry. It's a they lot gonna of, milk that boy. It's a, it's a lot of regular girls out there that'll love you, boy. They'll love you in a group. They'll, you ain't got to you ain't got to go for nobody who's already famous too, man. Just you know, I ain't they nothing not, wrong. They're they not they're not a fan of that regular girl. Yeah, well you should be, because the regular girls are that's the prize, man. Uh, oh, they're not a fan of that. That's at the all. prize. That's the prize. They wilder too, especially if like that, like Catholic girls. And you know what about that regular girls? It's it's tougher to find them now. Nah, it's, nah it's, I know this is it's not sure. you just gotta go outside. Yeah, go well now I'm talking about true. the kids that won't go they won't go outside. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. You gotta go outside. And with the internet era, these the gamers, they stuck in their room. Man, it's listen, dim. It's, everybody it's, gotta go to Target. Everybody gotta go to the grocery stores. That's everybody. what you really mean. That's not target true, bro. I'm not giving it. Y'all speaking Y'all speaking from privilege. The girl from home. Y'all speaking from privilege. Y'all are speaking from privilege. The people I'm talking about, Home Depot and Target is 90 minutes away. <laughs> you know, Shaq goes, though. You know what? Like, uh, uh, Shaq still pops up at, and Tyler Perry go to Walmart. So, nigga can't tell me you don't yeah, want to go to Walmart yeah, or Target. Yeah. Target is the lick. I'm going to tell you, too. Target like, yeah. I, I be walking, <laughs> Target in a Yo, Walmart everywhere in the United States, I be walking States, through Target with Shaq, and she be like, look to your left. And we look to the left, and it be like, ass on ass on. And again... <laughs> My wife top tier, but I'd be like, God damn. But it's still <laughs> nice to look at some ass with your yeah, wife. Hell yeah. Yeah. What? No, nah, it's nice to, to look at some ass with your wife. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Look, look, look. You got Three o'clock. You'd be yeah. like, I be, and then, and then I be, I collect toy cars, so I'd be in the toy section. <laughs> so I'd be them little niggas and their mamas be like, what's up, little, little nigga? Mama. Come here, little nigga. Come here, little nigga. You want a car, little nigga? You want a car, nigga? Tell your mama come over here and pick your car, little nigga. You know what I'm saying? Mom wearing some V-cut and shit. She be reaching. You be like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah. your wife said, call your name. You're married, so I can't ask you. But how you feel about tricking? I, I think I think, I think, think that, 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 that needs to... I think that there's a place... For it all, they wouldn't say prostitution is the oldest job, right? It's mm. the oldest profession. oldest profession. Like you, you never. It costs. Women are valuable, and they understand their value a lot earlier. So whether you do the long term plan, which is a married and long term girlfriend, or you do the short term plan, like a, you know, you yes. rent or buy yeah. a boat. You know, I'm pro. I'm pro whatever work for you. You know, everybody don't have game. They're not cool. They're not gonna be able to talk. Every girl ain't gonna like you. So shit, negotiate the price, get it done, and get it over with, and that's cool. Pure prostitution. Or if you got somebody you sugar daddy in for, I don't have no problem with work. What I have a problem with is force. Don't force no woman to do no shit she don't want to do. And, and, and that, so don't put your hands on them, that rape and taking shit. My, to my thing, the community should deal with you immediately. Mm-hmm. But in terms of, man, you an OG, you want to buy some pussy, buy some pussy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's it. You know, ain't nothing, uh, you know how many niggas woke Jordan to school because their mama had a friend? So you know what I mean? I, 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 I can't trip over no, I can't Holy trip over your mama shit. having no friend. You know, a lot of y'all. Mr. Stanley, Mr. Yeah, yeah. Stanley. Yeah, Mr. Stanley, Stanley was coming Mr. Stanley, through. Mr. Stanley that brought your ass to pity all the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yo, yeah, yeah. Geez, niggas about, think tricking, niggas, niggas think video vixens, niggas think strippers, niggas think sex. No, nigga, your no. mama. No, right. Your mama does Your mother. Listen. Yes. Yes. Your you know, mother, I yeah. Not, I t- all of yeah. them. Yes. No, who your mama was before you met her. Yeah, that's right. Your mom. Talk about it. Your daddy met that wild freak off the chain. Talk you know about I mean? it now. He was just because she loved him. Then man, you know what yeah. I mean? Chris a lot Rock. of your brothers and sisters got swallowed. You made it. Mm. You know what I mean? That's, that's the blessing. Nigga, yeah. that's that the is blessing. the blessing. Chris Rock said that everybody mama been a hoe for somebody. For somebody. Listen, I say all the no time. Well, my, recently, I've been saying, Neil deGrasse Tyson, that clip changed my life. He said, yo, when you just think about the amount of babies that could not make it. And you made it. You beat the odds already. The lottery, mm-hmm. nigga. Yeah, it's like that, hitting the lottery. I, I used to tell people that all the time, man. You can complain about your life. You know, I got generational curses. My life was the worst. This nigga, you, you made you it here to be born. Yes. Yeah, nigga, you made it. Talk to your mother about the secret abortion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Like, talk to your parents. Oh, man. Get, it's, get to it. Yeah. That's, so, you know, hey, man, it's, it's, it's um, a lot of people need Jordans out there, man. So, you know. I, <laughs> I ain't Especially New York and New Jersey, yeah, this high ass cost of living. I tell you, I mean, New York, wherever New York dudes go, y'all fuck up the market. Y'all overpay for pussy. <laughs> See? Y'all some, y'all some over pussy paying ass motherfuckers, man. Y'all done fucked up the Dominican Republic. You done ruined my ass. Y'all, 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 y'all tried to uh, fuck up Atlanta, but Atlanta was like, no, nah, nigga, $40, baby. $40. No. Oh, like, man. Y'all, boy, New York just went crazy, man. Yeah, yo, New York. Fuck. New York, New York, and my Nigerian scammer partners. <laughs> Oh, Y'all fuck up dumb the niggas. Politics. It's dumb. The scam, it's dumb. The scam, it's not uh, them nah, Nigerians nah, and them African no, niggas. No. The nah, the African <laughs> niggas. New Yorkers, yo. Yeah, it was New York first. Y'all, y'all niggas y'all, with yeah. these max Man. contracts fucking it up for the regular niggas. Them, them boy, them boy were paying. But hey, <laughs> thank, thank you for the joints, Mr. Stanley. <laughs> Mr. Stanley, yo. When, 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 you. when I get mature enough to to pick out a mentor, will you mentor me? Word. No, Man, no bull- so Will you nah, mentor no me? Bullshit. Like, I'm gonna get your phone now. I want to talk to you more. I, mean, I would like to talk I wanna, to Joe Boy I want to text not you less, more. Yeah, yeah, I won't. Yeah. I won't be annoying. I promise. I won't be nah, annoying. Nah, hit me. I fuck with you, Joe. It's easy. I, I don't know. come to Atlanta because I ain't got too many niggas. That, well, I got to think about uh, where y'all could just carry your gun around wherever. I do have. Yeah, they carry it. Well, too. I mean, Joe, we are in a nation where we only 13 percent of the population. Mm-hmm. Only 40 million people. Three million, 300 million people in this country. You'd be. You'd be. You know. You'd be. It's not. It's not smart not to be trained and armed. It's not smart. You know, I live in Atlanta, but Atlanta's in Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. I come to Atlanta a lot. Yeah. I would like for you wait, to mentor I don't want... me as well. Hey, wait, wait, out, man. We should wait. Why are no, you fucking mentor him. riding? She need him. Get you because you'll get your ass back with MC Light. Get your ass with Angie and No, she need him. Hey man, this boy hell man. She need him, yo. Come on now. I don't want that to sound like I'm not in support of gun rights. Yeah. I am in support of gun rights. Yeah. But when I hear stories like the, what happened with Shaka, I love yeah. you, Shaka. Shaka, like that, Shaka. That stuff, that stuff scares but me. But the main and, thing. In New York, they're so strict with that stuff where you can go in a building and it's a little safe to assume. Yeah, but I challenge that on New York because I see a lot of white boys up here with guns. Tell, like, me, tell like, me more. Yeah, yeah, tell like, me more. Like, 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 no, that's true. Let's see what you're talking about. One of our uh, financial chick we fired a few years ago, she had just helped a white boy friend of his get a gun. This nigga ain't no, he not a CO, he not a policeman. So I honestly think in the Northeast in particular, wherever liberal white people run politics, black people are being shorted. I'm going to tell you that when, when it comes to your rights. That's because mm-hmm. the New York gun That's law true. says you can't have a long rifle, right? But I bet you on Long Island, they're AK-47s. I bet you they're shotguns. I bet you they're AR-15s. Because if you get it to your house, it's legal. It's just a transport. Well, so who different. stands the greater yeah. chance of being stopped in transport? Us. That's true. Us. That's, That's true. all. That's so true. what I'm saying, so like for me, I'm a strict constitutionalist in matters of what 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 are, what are promised in terms. Thanks to Miss Ellison, peg legged, peg legged um, teacher. When well, I picked, she had an a- amputated leg, but she was mean as shit. She flunked my mama. She threatened <laughs> to flunk me, but she made me love our Bill of Rights and Constitutions and understand that as it's written, ask for it that way because that means everybody gets it the same. It, it's a shame for me that there are more roadblocks in my neighborhood than in L's neighborhood. See, L ain't gonna get no roadblocks driving out in his neighborhood. L ain't gonna get stopped, so L gonna get his shotgun. Mm-hmm. His, when I stop, when I get stopped, I'm gonna have to tell the officer where actually I hunt, and I'm gonna have to give him a goddamn mm-hmm. story. Mm-hmm. What I love about George is they just, hey, you, you got a gun, ain't nothing wrong, no, thanks for letting me know, here's your ticket, have a good evening. I mm-hmm. get nervous once I get north, north of the Mason-Dixie, because I know his guns in the room, it's just not on me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fuck that. Yeah, respect, <laughs> respect. No, it's just but I'm coming out there. I want you to come I'm, out, man. I'm, come I'm coming. We going to Flame. We going to the. I'm gonna take you to the High Museum. I'm on the board of the High. The, the High has these nights where they play music and they drink and kind of kick it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a you know, it's a white institution, of course. Um, but it's 54 percent of the people who go there look like us. They have they, the thing, a cool yeah. night. So I want you to come. I That's want the you, shit with Atlanta, yo. Yeah. I am. That's the shit with Atlanta and DC. Yeah. When you go to Atlanta. You'll get 
black excellence more yeah. than most places in the country. And when people think black Atlanta. excellence, though, they think like like the biggest Jay Z. No, I ain't talking right? about no rappers. But what I'm talking I'm about, I'm talking about black excellence. It, nigga, the nigga who worked for the city making yeah. seventy bands. Yeah. He got a three hundred thousand dollar house. Mm-hmm. He got an old school. He got a new car. His mm-hmm. wife good. That to me, that's, that's excellence because yeah. they mm-hmm. children getting a good education. They gon they gon fertilize the next generation. That's that's it for mm-hmm. me. Tyler Perry, man, got an old mm. Confederate. Boy, mm. This nigga, that, mm. come on, man. Like it, it don't nah. happen no other Atlanta, place. Atlanta is Atlanta and DC, yo. It's a book though. I want y'all to get called "The Devil You Know" by Charles Blow. Fifty-four percent of all African Americans live in the South, so Atlanta can be replicated. Birmingham, Montgomery, Charlotte, um, Columbia, mm-hmm. Jacksonville, Savannah, mm-hmm. Macon, Tampa. We have a lot of other places because Atlanta didn't just happen. Mm-hmm. It was plotted out. Mm-hmm. You know, John Wesley Dobbs was around in the 40s and 50s. His grandson in the 70s becomes mayor. His grandson mandates a certain amount of city contracts. That creates a, a, a bigger millionaire class, a bigger um, upper um, upper class. That creates a bigger middle class and working class. We can replicate this in other places. But we have to go forth knowing that this is a plan. That's true. And, and, if, and, and Atlanta's not the best in terms of it's not perfect. I think it's the best amongst us, but it's not perfect. But just like we're trying to create a more perfect union with this country, I believe that there are cities throughout the South with the economic potential to give us a more perfect version of what Atlanta let is. Me, let me ask you a question. Do you think that, because um, I have the same argument, yeah. but I, I always group Atlanta with D.C. And I, and, yeah. and I attribute that level of success because Atlanta and D.C., have more colleges, especially black institutions, yes. than most places in the country. Man. So when people go to school, you go to the closest metropolis yeah. to get jobs. Yeah. That's Atlanta for y'all. Yeah. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Just in Atlanta, y'all got Clark, y'all got Morehouse, Spelman, all of these Morris black Brown institutions, well. Morris Brown. Yeah. So in D.C., you got Morgan, you got Coppin, you got Howard, you got Dell State. Don't forget all Hampton over in Virginia. Yeah, yeah. North South, all of that yeah, stuff. Absolutely. So they go straight to D.C., which yeah. is the biggest metropolis to get jobs. So you see the black families. How do you think that that could be replicated without, and I'm not shooting at nobody that didn't get a college education, yeah. but Thank that you. is definitely... Um, one, one of the catalysts. Most with, of the regards. HBCUs are in the South. You start exactly. Talking, yeah. So what I mean, but not is, as if, prevalent as Atlanta got. It, it doesn't have to be as prevalent as Atlanta. It just has to be there to be relevant. True. You know, just you, you just have to look at FAMU. Tallahassee ain't a big town. Mm-hmm. Tallahassee got Florida State and Tallahassee mm-hmm, got mm-hmm. and Tallahassee got um, a, a FAMU. FAMU. So what you do is you take your ass to FAMU. You do the best you can. You get off campus. You go communicate. Um, get cool with the people at Florida State, especially get cool with the athletes, so they can f- marry somebody that looked like their mama. Right, get mm-hmm. your black, get your black ass off that Florida State campus. Get over to FAMU campus. Go have some, you know, go have some relations with somebody that look like you. Because what I don't want to happen is when you're generational wealthy after you die, nigga. I wanted to come back to the community in some capacities. But I believe I have a good friend that went to Hampton. Shouts out to T. She is. She is a person, and it actually got me hooked up with my stylist. So thank you for that. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> they both went to Hampton. They're DC kids, right? But they're DC kids that understood that. The world wasn't D.C., so they got out and seen more of the world, but they used the competence and the confidence to walk in rooms with their head up, already assured I'm good enough. So you can, you, can, you can go get a job in D.C., you can go get a job in Atlanta, but beyond the job, the fact that you know you can start business, the fact that you know you can start consulting, the fact that you know you can land somewhere else and recreate on a micro level what you grew up in, that's the more powerful thing. Sure. Because okay. Atlanta wasn't always Atlanta. Atlanta, at one point, black people were not the majority there. We were a significant enough numbers to grow, but the numbers grow. The neighborhood I grew up in was an all-white neighborhood at first. Black people say, we ain't finna fight white folks to live next to them. We're going to offer everybody a 30% markup on their house. We're going to push them further out. And the Collier Heights was created. People say, for real, I never thought that. I say, man, our next door neighborhood is named Dixie Hills. You think a bunch of niggas would have named their neighborhood Dixie Hills? (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) So I'm just telling black folks, it don't happen in one quick stroke. It may take some time, but have the confidence that you're competent enough to do it. So whether you go to Howard or Hampton, whether you go to Clark or Morehouse, just know that whether you root, set your roots there and grow it there, or you take it somewhere else, it's needed. You know, Tuskegee's this big. Literally, Tuskegee, the town no, of Tuskegee small. is this big. Only hotel in the town, shit, it's probably still on the college campus. But look how Tuskegee has affected the world. 
mm-hmm. you know, and that's what I want us to understand that we need you growing up in positive black places. And and it doesn't have to be college. We need trade school. When you think about Tuskegee, the kids that built the buildings, they built the bricks, they made the bricks themselves. So Tuskegee mm-hmm. was as good as teaching you how to be a brick mason or a carpenter mm-hmm. as it was to teach you how to be a high tradesman like a doctor or an engineer. And I think that we need to start paying attention to trades. Our children need to know how to build houses and skyscrapers because I don't give a fuck how many robots get made. Somebody's going to have to know the trade of right. how to wire that motherfucker. I say it all the time. You're yeah. right. And which, oh yeah, congratulations to Georgia Youth Build. They they are a, they are a um, Georgia Youth Build and Next Level Academy are two organizations I support. Um, Next Level Boys Academy, ran by Gary Davis. Um, is it is conflict revolu- resolution? It is getting boys together who are on a road to criminality, getting them that redirected and out of the court system. Um, Georgia Youth Bill is one of my favorites because it takes kids from 14 to 24, gets them their high school diplomas and GEDs, and then gives them a trade. Partners them with a union, and then gets them union wage jobs. Wow. And wow. they graduate today. I was supposed to be doing wow. a commencement ceremony, but I said, "Fuck them kids." I'm with Joe. <laughs> 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 no, I love them. Listen, and, but and, I love and them. I though. Those I kids, them, I love man. those kids. They doing their thing. Uh, and it's just the more I hear him speak, and I'm done. I don't have. I'm done talking to this nigga. But <laughs> the more I hear him speak, I'm so blown away that he never took killer off his name. I tried. <laughs> I tried. Yeah. I tried. I'm surprised so somebody didn't did make you do that. Yo. I tried. I tried. I tried. I mean, I, I, first of all, I earned the name Killer. I didn't. I didn't wake up. You know, nine year old Mike, man, Melissa. I wanted to be handsome, Mike. When Kim, when Kim, <laughs> Walton, Kim Walton kissed me on my fucking cheek in third grade, and I think my mom had a, like lame ass Jerry curl out of my hair. I just, she was just like, "You oh. cute," and I was like, "Bitch, I'm the shit." You know what I mean? <laughs> I would have been handsome, Mike, but Double D, who was a, uh, they used to do these things called green lights like battles in Atlanta and man my partners didn't come and these lame ass niggas was in there and they knew my partners didn't come and they was just talking shit and um, so I battled them motherfuckers I slayed them and Double D was like man this kid's a killer he, he shut the part Double D was like cock diesel he was, I was like everybody shut the fuck up like <gasps> he was like this kid's a killer and ever since I came back no one ever called me Mike, Mike. Yeah, well, yeah, it was just killer. Mike. It was killer Mike. So when I went and I, I was proud that I earned the name. When I went and I became Killer Mike, Big and Drake, like that shit hard. And then they got to Columbia and they was like, "Well, we want you to change your name." And I'm just like, "No, I'm not fucking changing my name." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And um, that was one of the beefs me and Rico had at first. Like, we Rico was like, "You need to change your name, like Kill or Mike M I C," because what Rico understood is that it was going to be a burden, mm-hmm. and he was trying to save me from that. Like a big bro's supposed to do. And I was like, nah, you know, stubborn little motherfucker. Right, and the next five years. It was tough. It was tough as it a motherfucker. Tough. But right when I was ready to break, I said, man, I'll just give you Mike Bigger. And I called my girl Shay Bigger. Shay Bigger stuck. Everybody was like, man, we don't want to hear. I thought Mike Bigger was dope as fuck. I'm a big nigga. My name. I like it too. Yeah. yeah Mike, Mike, Bigger. Mike Bigger. That's a hard rap name. Yeah, I thought so too. Man, Jason DeMarco, who introduced me to L. And underwrote rap music. He got Turner Broadcast. He got Cartoon Network to pay for one of the hardest rap albums ever. He said, "Bro, just call yourself Killer Mike, and I got the budget for you." And I'm just like, "Let's get it, white folks." Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and built after, too much equity up. Yeah, Killer Mike. And, and and then it was just no turning the back. And and then once people, I, I, and I really got a lot of respect for the OG. I haven't been out on the trail with him in a while, but I have a lot of love and respect for Bernie Sanders. And um. I can tell. It, it's, yeah. it's, I can tell. You know the OG man. He um, he had he had some badass black motherfuckers working for him. Like Tesman Figaro, who's now mm-hmm. on um now on the Breakfast Club, is just a badass black woman. She like if Tupac had a wife, it would have been her. Mm-hmm. Like real shit. Mm-hmm. She was tough as nails, and I admired that because he got challenged on me a couple times, and he stood with me. You know what I'm saying? On the Killer Mike shit, he stood with me against the bullshit Hillary's campaign, tried with me, you know what I'm saying? And I just, I fuck with the OG for that, man. Mm-hmm. You know, and like my granddaddy, we used to say too, man, keep some good white folks on your side. Oh, you better believe <laughs> so, that. So shout out to the OG, man. Thank you. Keep some good white, keep, 
Keep some, some good, good white, white folks, folks on your side. Yeah, all that pro black power shit is hey. cool, but <laughs> keep a few of them in the talk. Look, like uh, the big joker. <laughs> stupid, yeah. Shots out to Denver. They did their thing, man. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> yes, they did. Some yes, they folks. did. <laughs> oh, man. You, you hear him up there? I, Every, thought, I told y'all I didn't want to go to parade, hey, but, but now I'm happy parade. Fuck that. Fuck that. Oh, man. I'm staying. Fuck that. Oh, Mike. man. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I want to thank you for this album, this thank project. You. Thank you. Thank you. Tell Dion, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get him one day. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna save my money. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find him. Man, we just go, we just go hang out in LA with him. Just go, just go to the studio and just sit around. Yo, you know the thing about him too. Though, anytime I got around him, like his, he's just such a prolific guy. Yeah. That I didn't want to make music. I just wanted to listen to the nigga. Yeah. He a ghost. Like he really is. Like a, he like Mr. Glass. He kind of yeah. pop in and fade out, and then he'll say one thing and then just leave. But the thing I had you thinking all night. But people like him, I think, need to be ghosts. These yeah. people in the public think I'm blunt. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to talk to Dion. They yeah, think yeah. I'm blunt. Yeah, yeah, they think, yeah, but he going yeah, to give it to you. And, and he going to set it down. He not even going to sit around and argue with you about it. He just no. going to say it and walk out. I'm out. Yeah, yeah this and, is and, it. And leave you with the shit. You like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, damn. I, I, I remember me and Cubs were like, damn, man, how you do this? How we get? And he looked down and said, y'all just got to learn to walk, work with pros. And walked out on <laughs> and, and I was like, I, it, but it radically changed the way I looked at everything. Like, if you got potential, that's fine. But I'm too old to bet on potential. Mm. Where yeah, the yeah, pros? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Let's get yeah. the pros. Let's get, you know what I mean? That's, Talk about it, that's God all, damn it. man. Like, like, that potential shit, I, I get to understand the beautiful women. After the beautiful women, the clock start ticking. Oh, yeah, nigga, that potential. You going to be a rapper one day? Yeah, my nigga. Mm -hmm. I been wishing luck on mm -hmm. that, my nigga. But, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go fuck with the pros. You know yeah. what I mean? So. Yeah. Oh, man. No yeah. idea if you hear this. I love you. Love you, Mike, man. I Salute. love this album. Thank, Thank you, you so much, though. I love you. I'm, I'm, I'm getting love your respect. number. We're going to talk more. Yeah, yeah, That's absolutely, it. man. Call me That's anytime. It. Yeah, I want when you come to Atlanta, any of y'all, y'all come to Atlanta. Please I'm coming out there in August, <laughs> all, right before my birthday. I'm coming out there. The podcast, I think, is canceled that day. Whatever. You a Leo? Yeah. I'm a Virgo. You a Virgo? I'm okay. a Virgo. The so you like my man T? I think two times a Virgo too. Uh, 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 okay. Virgos run this shit, yeah. but that's for another time. <laughs> I'm coming out there for my fantasy draft. Gotcha. I told Ray Daniels I was gonna fuck with him out there. Shout like, out to Ray. There's some people out there I got to get with. Yeah. But. I'm getting with you. I got you, bro. Please just let me flame. know, man. Please let me know. Beyond the flame, we're going to do a bunch of cool shit. The flame the museum is black on. We're going to do the museum shit. Take you to some restaurants. Get you. I love to get you out of swag. And Mike shop. told me, he, he gave me the hookup if I want an Atlanta property. Yeah, absolutely. If I want my some man Gerard Sales Atlanta. If y'all on Instagram, my brother G, man, is, is an amazing realtor. And um, he, he, he just, he, he comes from... Augusta, he came to Atlanta itself and, and, and just figured it out, and y'all will love him. So he really gets the nuance of people who are moving to the city, and he can help you be comfortable. Good, good. Thank you. And shouts out to Andrea, too, who's also one of our realtors, who's amazing. Isn't that good with names? He made me want to get better with names. You I'm Melissa. trying to. It was something I had it's to respect. learn. They're good. Of course. My memory, my memory I smoke a lot of dust. They ain't smoking the dust. <laughs> nah, they had they, 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 they no dust in it. Nah, they had no dust. <laughs> nigga was putting the uh, nigga was snorting yeah. dust. Yeah. Nigga wasn't smoking dust. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was just smoking a little weed. I wasn't yeah, doing it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Church Ladies and shit. gentlemen, man, clap it up. Clap it up for Mike, love, man. Love. Album Michael in your phones right this very second. Thank you. I'm going to be playing some more of this shit. Y'all should do the same. I encourage y'all. And totally outside of music, just this image in rap. Fuck the music for yeah, a second. No, yeah, no. Yeah. Just this conversation in rap. Yeah. This, this is what, this is, we need it. Yeah. I'm, we need it and and more of it. Way oh, more. Come on. And if you want to converse with me and, and you came me on TV, man, just stop by one of the swag shops. I, I I be in my own barber shops. Come by, get a cut. We'll chop it up. We do the barbershop arguments. We ain't filming none, so you can say all the ridiculous shit you want to. Nobody gonna judge you. <laughs> and we got some cool products coming out too. So for all y'all guys with beards and mm. you know the curly hair white guys, I got dope, <laughs> I got dope shampoo for you, my brother. No doubt, appreciate you. Know what you. Mean? My brother, man. I got dope shampoo for you, <laughs> my brother. Oh man, oh man, that is killer, Mike. Love. Round of applause, man. I love that. That was awesome. That was I love. That was amazing. I could yeah. speak to him all day. I could listen all, to him talk all day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all day. Yeah, where I ain't even got to speak to him. Word. I could just listen to him. Uh, 
Shit, we got sleepers. We over three hours. Yeah. Fun cast. Uh, uh, like Add a killer mic to the fun cast. <laughs> Come on, man. Who has more fun than this? Clap it up. <laughs> Clap. <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> fuck off, man. I swear to God. Smooth weekend. Hope everybody out there has a really good weekend. Hope y'all in good spirits, good moods, good vibes. Keep us in your prayers. Lord knows we need to be there until the next time. It probably went over your head. Went over for head. Lord knows we need to be there until the next time. I bid you adieu. Farewell. Adios. Arrivederci. Hasta la vista. Au revoir. So long. Goodbye. Life is a series of moments and moments pass. So let's be grateful. Show some gratitude. Love your neighbors. Kiss your neighbors. Remember the baddies are insecure, the stagnant women want to travel, and the closed-minded women want you to teach them things. And the women that hate you want you to protect them. <laughs> Hold it down out there. Ice flip. I'll see y'all next week. Enjoy your extended vacations, you fucks. Word. <laughs> like, damn, I need to call up. Uh, shout out to the ladies rolling around in their jeeps out there, huh? <laughs> rolling around on their jeeps. She got hood burn. She got hood burn. <laughs> uh, repurposing content. Shout out to the content creators out there, huh? Shout out to Shaq. <laughs> I hope y'all have fun this weekend, man. I want to thank Savon for stopping by. We love and appreciate him. Mm. Gang, gang, gang. Alex, Alex, you do for a visit too, yo. We love you. We miss you. Bring your ass up here. God damn it. And happy Father's Day. Huh? Happy Father's Day. And happy Father's, happy Father's Day. Day to all the dads out there. Mm -hmm. Happy Father's Day-ish, early. I know I won't speak to you. We don't talk no more. Uh, but happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Why didn't say thank you to me, nigga? I did say thank you. Uh, I didn't hear it. You had the music up, asshole. Happy Father's oh, my Day, man. sir. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey. This a fool, Yo, everybody, enjoy their weekend. Hey, happy Juneteenth, happy Juneteenth. True. Funnest podcast in the world, man. <laughs> you niggas can't outfun us out there. Fuck they talking about. <laughs> JBP, why would you be without the JBP? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nobody did to grab you or participate. Join us. Oh my God. That was the most he ever did. Yeah. Yeah. This fucking guy, man. Peace, man. The fuck. No, Joe Biden.